Chapter 321 Giant Crossbow Translator Transan Editor Transan Something had occurred in South City recently, but because it was neither a huge matter nor was it a small issue, not a lot of people seemed to care. However, it was a topic for discussion among those who drank. The manager of the South Wall Tavern of many years, Liu Qiying, more commonly known as shopkeeper Liu, had officially announced that he would sell off the tavern as he was heading to Shu Like for retirement. Shopkeeper Liu, who was in his fifties, was not considered that old. He was in the prime of his life as his business was booming with enormous profits each day. Hence, it was indeed unexpected that he chose to retire at this time. It went without saying that the drinkers were more concerned about their fine wine, they were worried that there would be a change in the taste of the wines when shopkeeper Liu retired. It was only until the new manager publicly announced that everything in the tavern, from the supply channels to the preservation methods and prices, would remain the same, did the drinkers relax. After the drinkers bid farewell and well wishes to shopkeeper Liu, no one was interested in this matter anymore. The way Liu Qiying had departed so hastily also caused some speculations among people. It was as though he was fleeing something as he had left without even bidding farewell to all his relatives or friends. I saw he visited Dragon King secretly the other day. Perhaps things didn't work out and he was afraid, that's why he left in such a hurry. Being relieved of his managerial position in the tavern made Liu Qiying a little worried. But his fear was directed to the enemies of Dragon King, not Dragon King. As of right now, he was feeling more excited than afraid. He was about to embark on a newer and bigger career. Dragon King had plans to build up a business network in the western region, with Xiaofeng Chai in charge of Jade City and Liu Qiying responsible for establishing several strongholds in various other countries. The first stop was Shulike, the largest country in the western region. He needed only to establish a solid foothold here and his career would already be semi-successful. Liu Qiying picked 37 out of over 100 machete men who worked for him. They would protect him and his years of savings, traveling together to a land with broad prospects. These men were those who had followed him for a long time and were trustworthy and loyal. It was a huge gamble but Liu Qiying was as excited as a young man seeing the world for the first time sitting in the carriage with a smile on his face even though he was already in his fifties. He only regained his composure when he looked at the missing finger on his hand. It had been cut off by Dragon King several years ago, when Dragon King was still slave Huan. The hope of his success and the risk of his failure were closely linked to this cool-faced young man, but Liu Qiying was not quite sure how to deal with this merciless devil emperor. Dragon King was also present, hiding among the 37 guards. Dragon King's absence was kept strictly confidential within Jade City. The residence of Dragon King was not peaceful these days. Old machete men spied from afar and had even come closer to start provocations at times wage small attacks, shouting and cursing in the dark and sending out hidden weapons. All this made people believe that the Dragon King was still in his residence, ready for any provocation. Even the guards of the residence of Dragon King thought that their master was in the backyard since Jiang served tea and water on time every day, and Xu Xiaoyi came to report as well. Things went on as usual, and the Dragon King still remained as mysterious as no one saw him. With their cleverly machined plans, Ji Yu Shenwei, together with Maid Lotus and eleven disciples from the New Moon Hall, left Jade City hiding in Liu Qiying's team. Except for Maid Lotus, the disciples of the New Moon Hall were all scattered around Jade City and seldom appeared. Only Maid Lotus was able to find them any time. After the first night of camping, three guards went missing from Liu Qiying's team, but almost no one noticed it, and neither did Liu Qiying. The journey continued the next morning, with ten female killers in the team, making Liu Qiying feel at ease. Ji Yu Shenwei, Made Lotus, and Guan Shong hid in the mountain nearby as they waited for first young Master Meng, who would arrive one day later. Among these three people, the former black-masked assassin Guan Shong from the Golden Rock Fort was the main assassin. 
Normally, golden rock killers preferred to use their swords when killing in close proximity, before cutting off the heads afterward, just to be on the safe side. However, things were different this time. They had to kill people stealthily and not hurt the guards, but at the same time publicize it. Therefore, Ji Yushun Wei decided to launch a long-range attack using a crossbow. Guan Shong was the best at crossbow among the three of them. They brought with them a huge crossbow, so tall that it was almost the height of a grown man when straightened. It required the combined strength of five ordinary people to even notch the bowstring. The effective range was up to several hundreds of steps away, but the most effective distance was within 200 steps. As Maid Lotus was in charge of monitoring the route, Guan Shong was practicing how to use the huge crossbow. Ji Yushun Wei helped her to stretch the bowstring and observed the effects, periodically giving her advice. They had been doing the same thing all day. It was tiring and tedious but the three of them were killers who had underwent strict training and were, therefore, used to it. Especially Guan Shong, who had gone through the complete set of training for a black masked assassin. She was definitely more refined in terms of technique and mentality than the other two. Ji Yushun Wei secretly pondered what kind of evil medicine was the so-called blood coagulation pill that made someone like Guan Shong switch allegiance. Or was this yet another double ploy? But. Maid Lotus seemed to trust Guan Shong. Although she rarely revealed her true thoughts, Ji Yushun Wei knew that Maid Lotus was just as suspicious as he was. First young Master Meng's entourage finally arrived that evening. The outskirts of Jade City were barren and desolate, and there were few places suitable for camping. It was not surprising that first young Master Meng set up camp in the same area as Liu Qiying. The best time to assassinate was naturally before dark, when the line of sight was more ideal, the camp slightly more disorganized and the guard perimeters not completely set up. Ji Yushun Wei and Guan Shong draped snow-white capes over themselves as they hid on the mountain while made lotus lurked on the side of the road to surveil closely. All three of them observed first young Master Meng. There were several excellent opportunities to assassinate but they did not strike. Golden Rock Fort had sent thirty killers and one hundred machete men to protect first young Master Meng. It was quite a powerful force and Ji Yushun Wei knew he would not be able to break through this line of defense even if he led all his people to attack. Besides, they were also a very experienced force. Before they set up the camp, five killers and ten machete men had already arrived earlier to search the camp and the nearby hillside. Anything out of the ordinary was not spared. The area where Guan Shong had practiced the crossbow was just several miles away from the camp, and there were messy footprints and traces of damage that could not be have been caused by ordinary crossbows. Ji Yushun Wei soon realized that he had not been not careful enough. He should have chosen a place farther away. Luckily, it was a narrow escape for them as the machete men did not advance further to the crossbow practicing grounds. They had apparently decided that the search had extended far enough. Despite this, Ji Yushun Wei still kept this in mind, marking it down as a mistake. There was a huge boulder on the hillside about 200 steps away from the camp. That was the place Guan Shong chose for the assassination attempt, it was also the place where the Golden Rock killers inspected most carefully. Two of the killers somehow did not seem very satisfied with this area as they came back to patrol a few more times, before sending a machete man to stand guard there. It was this machete man who created the biggest headache. Ji Yushun Wei and his team hid well without a trace. But they could not carry out the assassination before dark as it was impossible to get into attack position. The only thing they could do was wait which was the most fundamental task of killers. When night fell, the machete man guarding on the stone of the hillside lit a fire to stay warm. It also acted as a way to communicate with other machete men at the foot of the mountain. Soon, the people in the camp were preparing to go into their tents to rest. There was not much time left for the three assassins. When they had discussed the assassination plan earlier, 
Ji Yushinwei suddenly recalled how Shangguan Ayu's shadow had been reflected on the window, and drew up a backup plan based on this. If they had no chance launch an attack before dark, they would wait until first young master Meng returned to the tent, and kill first young master Meng by aiming at his shadow. There were a lot of loopholes in this plan. What if the first young master Meng decided to rest right after he entered the tent without even lighting a lamp? Not to mention, it was very difficult to judge a person's exact position just according to where the shadow was. But Ji Yushinwei was still wanted to give it a try. He had no more plans except this one. Otherwise, he would concede to return to Jade City with Maid Lotus and Gwen Shong right away and allow first young master Meng to live for another one or two months. But even if they were to carry out this backup plan now, they still faced another obstacle, the machete man guarding the giant stone. The machete man was from Golden Rock Fort and they could not kill him. Maid Lotus sneaked back and reported that first young master Meng had already lighted a lamp in his tent. They should take action as soon as possible. After whispering and perfecting the whole plan quickly, they launched into action. Ji Yushinwei suddenly felt excited. It was a long-lost but familiar feeling. He had no choice but to admit that cooperating with Maid Lotus had rejuvenated him. If the people beside him had been Chu Nanping and Tai Ling Long, he would have no choice but to give up on the assassination. Once again, he realized that he had failed in training killers. Ji Yushinwei quietly approached the machete man on the giant stone. When the machete man was yawning, it gave Ji Yushinwei an opening to appear and spread the poison. He quickly took off his cape and stood still, completing all of these in the blink of an eye. The machete man fell, and Dragon King took over his guard duty. Even if someone had been monitoring from the camp at the foothill, he would just assume that he had been seeing things for a moment. New Moon Hall was skilled in concocting poison, making it easy to swiftly knock out a machete man. From a distance, Ji Yushinwei was no different from a machete man as he was wearing black clothes under his snow-white cape. He noticed a vague shadow casting on first young Master Meng's tent. It was too large to make it out clearly, hence it was difficult to judge the location of the master based on this. But he decided to give it a go anyway. He could not waste this opportunity. Guan Shong came up behind him. Holding the huge crossbow, she crouched low and wait for Dragon King's command. Ji Yushinwei was also waiting for the signal. A faint light lit up at the foot of the mountain. No one would have noticed it if they were not looking closely. Up. Just a brief word and Guan Shong immediately stood up. She set up the huge crossbow on Dragon King's extended left arm and aimed at the blurred shadow on the tent. Ji Yushinwei was quietly counting down while Guan Shong was carefully calibrating. They would only have one chance at this. Whether they succeeded or not, they would have to withdraw immediately. Maid Lotus was at the edge of the camp at this moment and had a clearer picture of the situation. The people in the tent stood up as a group of guards passed by. Made Lotus blew on a piece of tinder that had been ignited ahead of time, immediately extinguishing it before retreating. Ji Yushinwei counted to ten for Made Lotus to get to a safe place. Guan Shong pulled the trigger and an iron arrow of about five or six feet flew out. They immediately discarded the huge crossbow and quickly climbed down the mountain. The guards in the camp were immediately alerted and blew the whistle but the arrow was already on its way. When the iron arrow reached the target and dozens of people in the camp headed for the huge stone, Ji Yushinwei and Maid Lotus were already headed for Jade City that very night. Guan Shong stayed behind to confirm the final outcome. Chapter 322 Humble Apology Translator Transan Editor Transan Guan Shong was extremely respectful towards Maid Lotus, to the point that it was bordering on fear instead. She would not even dare to raise her head or utter any other word, except for yes when Maid Lotus was in her presence. Ji Yushinwei could feel that Guan Shong was slightly relaxed when they were using the huge crossbow on a mountain, 
but she became stiff again as soon as Maid Lotus appeared. Ji Yushunwei took notice of these interactions, keeping in mind that there were still a lot of questions about Maid Lotus that was unanswered. However, he would rather observe in secret than ask her about it. Especially the fact that she could actually use the sword without any inhibitions. How did she manage it? It was not just the swordcraft that made Ji Yushunwei curious and even a little jealous. They were like two dear spirits who were full of energy and vigor back there. Leaping forward in the pure winter night, stepping onto the solid snow road. At first, they just wanted to hurry as fast as they could, but it slowly led to a competitive race. Ji Yushunwei had already recovered most of his internal strength. Although he was like a galloping horse at his fastest when he was using about 70 to 80 percent of his strength, Maid Lotus could always keep up with him. She only lagged behind slightly as a sign of respect, not because he was beyond her abilities. Ji Yushunwei gave up trying to compete against her just as they were approaching Jade City. He acknowledged that his lightness skills were slightly inferior to Maid Lotus skills. While Ji Yushunwei wasted about six months of his time fighting against Qigong Deviation, Maid Lotus had been practicing the correct version of the Wayless Qigong all these while. It was only natural that his progress was slower compared to hers. A dull anger arose in his heart again. What will old Meng do if first young master Meng dies, Maid Lotus asked suddenly. It was still before daybreak and they were already back in the residence of Dragon King. If he's as foolish as before, he will organize a lodge-scale attack. But if he's smart. Ji Yushunwei's anger was interrupted by her sudden question but he had no idea what clever old Meng would actually do. Unlike foolery, which was often similar, cleverness could be unexpected, and sometimes even full of surprises. Meng Yuzuan's actions were definitely unexpected this time. Almost nobody believed it when news of first young master Meng being assassinated broke out in Jade City. That was because not much people knew that he had left for Shulike, some of them even met him just two days ago. But it was proven to be true as more news arrived. The first young master Meng was assassinated within a hundred miles of the city. What made it even more incredible was the fact that he was found dead with a woman. In everybody's eyes, the first young master Meng had always kept a respectful distance from women. He hardly ever touched another woman except for his wife. Women are just a source of calamity, you need one to give birth to children, but anything more than that is just risking it. This was what he usually said as he advised his acquaintances. The first young master Meng whose desires were like that of a monk, was found hugging a half-naked prostitute. Their bodies were pierced by a long iron arrow and their blood blended together. It was difficult to separate the bodies for days on end. That prostitute was not even famous. She was just working in a small alley within South City and weren't even qualified to work as a maid in Pleasure Alley. Those who heard the news lamented at the fact that, for someone who had worked hard for all of his life, the woman that the poor first young master Meng had been found with was not as good as his housekeeper. All of a sudden, Dragon King's reputation rose again. In addition to that, there was no evidence to prove that it was Dragon King's doing. Many people swore that they saw Dragon King strolling in South City with their own eyes when the incident happened. Therefore, it could not be him. But the death of first young Master Meng was inevitably linked to Dragon King. As a result, a legend was secretly born. After some gossip was spread by word of mouth, people in Jade City were divided into two factions. The conservative faction that believed that Dragon King had raised a team of killers, like the black masked assassins of Golden Rock Fort. The fantasy faction, instead, was certain that Dragon King had already learned some doppelganger skill to deal with many things at the same time and he could summon his sword to kill people, and don't forget, there's still the demon bird. Dragon King could just ride it and go anywhere he wants quickly. Ji Yushunwei did not care about these rumors, he was still waiting for Guan Shong's news. In the end, Guan Shong brought back the most accurate information. 
while more than 100 killers and machete men almost turned up in full force looking for the traces of the assassin in the surroundings but could not find anything. Guan Shong took this opportunity to infiltrate the empty camp and took a look at the situation from up close. First young master Meng died, the arrow was shot through both his and the woman's waist, linking them together. Guan Shong would not be able to shoot it so accurately even in the daylight. Ji Yushan Wei was waiting for Meng Yuzuan's counterattack. As long as Golden Rock's killers were not helping out, the Meng family could hire all the machete men from South City they wanted to, in order to take revenge against Dragon King. In any case, Ji Yushan Wei and Maid Lotus knew how to deal with it. To their surprise and to all of Jade City's surprise, Old Meng admitted defeat. He apologized so profusely that Ji Yushan Wei was somewhat at a loss. On the morning of the third day after first young master Meng's death, a surreal peace prevailed around the residence of Dragon King. All of those unknown machete men who came looking for trouble were gone. That day, Fang Wenche did not attend the meeting for the peace negotiations, instead, he frantically ran to the residence of Dragon King, bringing with him a piece of astonishing news. Meng Yuzuan is coming to seek peace, he'll be here in a moment. The military counselor was out of breath, his lips trembled as he spoke. He, himself was also puzzled by this news. As predicted, before Fang Wenche even calmed down from the adrenaline rush, the guards already announced a visit from Meng Yuzuan. The patriarch of the Meng family from North City, the richest man in the western region, dragged his fat body along while carrying a twig of a chaste tree behind his back. He walked out of his house and completely ignored the questioning of others. His actions created doubts in North City, which was then followed by a big commotion in South City. A humble apology. Old Meng wanted to offer a humble apology to Dragon King. This news reached the incredulous ears of people at an incredible speed. A quarter of an hour later, thousands of people poured into the streets, following old Meng at a distance. Meng Yuzuan came alone without even a single attendant following him from behind. He entered the enemy's territory completely defenseless. Opening his arms, and with a grief and humble expression on his fat face, he said, I surrender to Dragon King. Old Meng stood under the newly erected red raven flag that was in the middle of the front yard. He put his right hand on his heart, and bowed profoundly, uttering words of defeat. He then lifted the edge of his robe and was prepared to kneel. Ji Yushan Wei did not expect such a scene to occur. In all his experience as a killer, there has never been an end to the fight between two enemies. The fights were usually to the death of either party. Apart from the good-for-nothing Shangguan Fei, he has never met a person who would beg for forgiveness and admit defeat so profusely as this one. Ji Yushan Wei grabbed old Meng's arm and helped him stand up before he could kneel down. He did so while hiding his strength and guarding against a sneak attack. Despite being very capable at Kung Fu, old Meng did not have any intention to sneak an attack. Right now, Meng Yuzuan was just a father who was suffering from the loss of his child. It's my fault. This is all my fault. Meng Yuzuan was covered in tears, it was me who provoked Dragon King at first. I even set up a plan to imprison him. I am a foolish old man who only saw the money in my hands and failed to notice that there were more powerful forces around me. I lost my child. I have learned my lesson. His words and expression seemed so sincere that the swordsmen from the Great Snow Mountain could not bear to look on. They went away one by one. Today, I stand in front of Dragon King, begging for forgiveness and also hoping to end the war. He continued talking, as humble as a deferential mountaineer who has just met the king, but I do not dare to beg for my life. My life, my family's property, all I have now belongs to Dragon King. You can do whatever you want. I only hope that Dragon King could spare the lives of my other two sons. They haven't taken part in any action against Dragon King. I am willing to exchange my life for theirs. Jiang was already wiping away her tears as she looked at Dragon King from the back. 
She would rather kneel down and beg for mercy herself, but she did not dare to do so. Thousands of residents from Jade City crowded the streets outside the gate. Old Meng's words were relayed exactly. Even those who initially wanted to see the drama were moved to tears. Everybody was absolutely quiet, listening attentively to Dragon King's reply. Countless pairs of eyes were staring at the expressionless Dragon King. Dragon King took three steps back very slowly. The spectators were trembling with fear. Meng Yuzuan could not understand as well. Dragon King then bowed profoundly to return the bow from Old Meng. He moved forward to remove the twig of the chaste tree on Old Meng's back with his own hands and threw it aside. He then raised his voice so that everyone, even the people outside the residence could hear. He said, The Great Snow Mountain and the Meng family have no hatred, Dragon King is willing to make an enduring fraternal bond with the Meng family. There was silence, which was then followed by sudden deafening applause. Dragon King and Old Meng turned from enemies into good friends in a short amount of time. This was even more sensational than the simultaneous marriage of the ten sons of the Supreme King. Even when a prostitute was doing the deed with her customer, this topic was all he could talk about. Meng Yuzuan set up a banquet and Dragon King invited him back. The governor congratulated him by holding a banquet as well, and so did the special emissary from the Central Plains. One by one, it went on like this for seven days. The whole of Jade City was immersed in a joy of peace. After all the outsiders were completely gone on the day when Old Meng sought peace, Fang Wencher went to Dragon King to congratulate him on his victory and praised him for his appropriate response that noon. To tell you the truth, I was still a bit worried back there, ha ha ha. He confessed. Ji Yushan Wei, however, was not so happy. He asked for the military counselor's opinion on Old Meng's sudden move. After thinking about it for a while, he uttered the same sentence he once said to Dragon King, as long as you reach your goal, being above board or by hook by crook doesn't matter. Ji Yushan Wei shared the same sentiments. Looking back suddenly, he realized that everything had been going on too smoothly lately. The main reason was that Golden Rock Fort faithfully abided the temporary armistice agreement and did not challenge the Great Snow Mountain. This was not exactly Supreme King style. There must be something big hidden within their obedience. The Meng family from North City was known as one of the most important allies of Golden Rock Fort. The Meng family could even be considered as the pillar for Golden Rock Fort. For them to admit defeat publicly and not actually seeking any help from the Supreme King really rang several alert bells for the constantly suspicious Dragon King. But he could not find a flaw. He used all his strength. New Moon Hall had already let Guan Shong expose herself in advance in order to save Dragon King. They took another risk and demanded their people inside the castle to dig out any information, which resulted in nothing. Everything was normal at Golden Rock Fort. Whether if they were common slaves or high-positioned chiefs, everyone was deeply shocked by Meng Yuzuan's action. Rumor has it that Lady Meng almost fainted when she heard about the news. Many people advised the Supreme King to resolve the situation between Dragon King and the Great Snow Mountain as soon as possible, but he always beats around the bush on the pretext that he could not break the peace negotiation agreement. There was only one month left until the end of the three-month temporary armistice, but a permanent peace negotiation was almost near. It seemed that the Supreme King was losing his last chance to eliminate future problems. Ji Yushan Wei could not figure out what kind of game Supreme King was playing. The fawning attitude of Meng Yuzuan made him extremely uneasy. He of all people knew exactly what it means to endure a moment of humiliation. It was about two weeks before the new year when Fang Wenchu received a piece of news that clear up some of the doubts Ji Yushan Wei had regarding his enemy's strategy. The princess of a small country in the western region had reached the age to get married and she was choosing the emperor's son-in-law. Fang Wenchu received a confirmed information from the special emissary from the Central Plains, which revealed that the Supreme King's son, Shang Fei, 
was also on the list of the possible candidates. Supreme King wants to become a real king this time, said Fang Wencher, all worked up. Chapter 323, Turnaround Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. This place was even more shabby than that chaotic machete men village, there were houses of mud and straw that followed one after another with their interconnecting doors. Strangers entered and left, but nobody seemed to care. There was nothing of value worth to be stolen or robbed in those houses. Ji Wei passed through one mud hut after another, also passing by a thin and weak boy, an old shivering woman, two men in a deep sleep, a flock of chickens, some cows and sheep leisurely chewing lay. Finally he found his target. A skinny man was laying on his heated brick bed, and his skin was sallow and flabby as if he had not eaten for a long time. Only his eyes, still bright and shiny, gave him the expression of a sick lion ready to jump off to hunt at any moment. In his hand, there was a saber with the scabbard, which was as battered as this room, and could barely cover the knife. As this person was not very famous in Jade City and recently almost vanished without a trace, Xu Xiaoyi had to spend a lot of energy to locate his whereabouts. Ji Yushan Wei sized him up for a while, but still could not recognize him, so he asked, Are you Hu Shining? The skinny man seemed already dead, he did not have any reaction. Only after a while did he roll his eyes and look suspiciously at his visitor, sighing slightly. Are you the training tutor of the East Castle's Carvewood Academy? Ji Yushan Wei could not refrain from asking another question. He really could not associate this skeleton man with the strong master who. A few years ago, Hu Shining was a training tutor of Golden Rock Fort, specialized in training a dozen teenagers who wanted to become killers. It was him who regretted that Sav Huan once refused a complete initial training and recommended this unusual disciple to Tai Han Fong. A year later, however, he lost the position as training tutor. As usual, the castle of the killers was full of complicated personal fights. Hu Shining was thought to be part of Young Master's faction, thus once Shang Guan Chue died, he would be purged too. He could choose to retain the name of Golden Rock's killer, live in a small house on the side of the mountain, receive a basic monthly salary, and spend his last years in this way. At that time though he was not yet even forty, and as many killers don't accept their age, he voluntarily refused to have any connection with Stone Castle, becoming a wandering machete man. The first two years passed by without any problems and Stone Castle's killers were part of the same circle and helped him a lot, however, they had an unwritten rule, never take part in a fight with Golden Rock Fort. Therefore, at the time of the Kung Kyu War, these middle-aged killers chose to stay aloof. During the following years, however, Hu Shining began to experience bad luck and misfortune one after another. First, he had a serious disease and had spent almost all his savings, then the two missions he took part in did not go very well and thus he lost his client. He began to be marginalized even in the circle since everybody believed that as training tutor, he lacked real fight experience, and he did not deserve to stay with the other killers. The second time he lost a personal battle, he became a completely vagrant machete man. Common machete men though also had many kinds of circles related to sects, families, acquaintances, and money. There was no one like him and after accidentally having offended some small protectors, he became an unwelcomed machete man. In this way, he gradually ended up in the poorest corner of South City where even bandits could not find the way, eating dull and waiting for his end. During all this time, Hu Shining did not receive any information and thus did not know anything about the outside world. He didn't even know that the man standing there was the legendary Dragon King. Furthermore, he could not recognize that this was that slave Huan who was so determined in becoming a killer. This was probably someone who came to kill me for revenge, he thought, hoping that he would attack soon. Ji Yushan Wei thought that the kindest way to treat this middle-aged machete man, who had lost his fighting spirit and his vitality, was to give him a saber, but he said, I've got a job for you. 
who shining twisted his neck and looked at this pale young man with astonishment. Then, recognizing some characteristics that only Golden Rock's killers had, he asked, Who are you? My name is Yang Huan. Yang Huan? Hu Shining repeated his name, but it did not ring any bells in his mind. I don't even have a saber, so I'm afraid I can't help you. That young man was clearly related to Golden Rock Fort. He was definitely starving to death and to avoid any trouble he did not want to be involved in any fight with Golden Rock Fort. Think about it. Whenever you want you can find me at my residence. Ji Yushinwei was a bit disappointed and felt that he found the wrong person. Ji Yushinwei turned around and took two steps when, Hu Shining, still lying on the brick-heated bed, suddenly uttered a sentence, You always turn right, this is not good. Ji Yushinwei stared blankly for a while, he had never noticed this detail of always turning right. Since he entered the room he had only turned around once, so how could that man say always turn right? Ji Yu Shenwei suddenly regained interest in the half-dead Ji Yu Shining. If you want, this is your job. Ji Yu Shenwei added before going away, correct young people's mistakes. Ji Yu Shenwei was standing at the entrance of the courtyard, after having passed again through the poor and indifferent residence. He was thinking about his habit of turning right when he suddenly took his hand out and grabbed a teenager from a bundle of straw mats leaning against the wall. Just as the other poor people who lived there, the young man was dressed like a beggar, and on his dirty face there were frost bits, yet his hand was holding a short sword. The short sword was shiny and sharp, even spotless, in deep contrast with its owner. It had been a while since Ji Yushinwei had discovered he had a little stalker, for whom he almost felt a kind of admiration, but his eyes were as cold as ever. Most people would panic and beg for forgiveness under the gaze of these kinds of eyes. The young man instead looked bravely into Dragon King's eyes, without drawing back even a step. I'm not afraid of you, he said with a slightly trembling voice. Ji Yu Shenwei threw the young man in the corner. If you really weren't afraid of me, you wouldn't say it out loud. Often the words coming from people's mouths are the opposite of those in their heart. I, I, the young man was confused by Dragon King's words and did not know what to say. The young man was called Nisen and was only thirteen years old. He arrived at Jade City to avenge his uncle's family, the three of them died, killed by Tai Hamfong and Slave Huan. He had a once-in-a-lifetime chance to avenge himself at the residence of Dragon King, but he missed the opportunity because he was too timid. Even though Dragon King did not kill him, he felt so ashamed that he wanted to throw himself into a river. Nizeng had been wondering about the residence of Dragon King for a long time, hoping to have another opportunity, and this time he would not hesitate. Dragon King seldom went out through the main gate. Nizeng kept on walking around the residence of Dragon King with an incredible perseverance and only one thought in mind, meeting by chance with Dragon King. That day, finally happened this by chance. But Dragon King was no more in the situation of the Qigong deviation and almost did not have a chance to make a move. Do you want revenge? I want revenge. Do you know how difficult it is to take revenge on someone? I know, but I don't care how hard it will be. Nothing will stop me from seeking revenge. Unless you don't kill me now. I've been preparing for revenge since I was fourteen years old. It's been more than six years now and I haven't done anything yet. For how long can you bear it? Nizen leaned against the wall and stared at Dragon King's pale face, speechless. He had heard that Dragon King wanted to seek revenge against Golden Rock Fort but had never thought about what this revenge had in common with his. He suddenly felt ashamed by Dragon King's words and, in a low voice, said, I'm not like you. You have Master Shifu. From whom do I learn Kung Fu? Over there, there's a man called Hu Shining. You can learn from him. Nizeng watched Dragon King disappear at the corner of the street without moving. This was not like Dragon King. Wasn't he the one who killed in a wink? 
How come that his own head was still on his neck? Ji Yu Shenwei went back to the residence of Dragon King, where Maid Lotus said, that child has got a savage character. He is indeed a good young successor. I'm just afraid that one day he will seek revenge on you. Maid Lotus was following him everywhere, but most of the time she would not show up. It doesn't matter. On my back, I've got a needle which can keep me on alert. Hatred is such a powerful force. This was one of the most important lessons Ji Yu Shenwei had learned from Golden Rock Fort. As long as well trained, one could control this force and direct it outside but not inside. After that, Lotus Mei did not say a word. In silence, she was pondering about what role she had next to Dragon King. It was like a needle in her heart, sad yet proud. Fang Wencha was already waiting for Dragon King. During those two days, he had lost his mind and had been analyzing Golden Rock Fort's intention to marry the princess. What's more, from the special emissary from the Central Plains, he received some big news which suddenly cleared up his mind. The Supreme King really is a wily old fox. He's faking this peace negotiation only to get his son married to the princess. Fang Wencha began to say, Do you know how perfect the princess is? Ji Yu Shenwei did not know it, but Fang Wencha was not looking for an answer and kept on talking by himself she's the king's younger sister. The king hasn't got any children and has been sick for many years. People say he will live only for a few years and after his death, the royal family will cease to exist. According to the western region's tradition, only the princess's son is the eligible one to the throne, do you understand? Fang Wencha kept beating his left hand with his right fist, all the countries in the western region are going crazy. This is clear, whoever marries the princess will acquire the country. The only thing left then is giving birth to a child. Who would not be jealous? I heard there are seventy to eighty kings who want to propose. Fang Wencha beat faster and faster, and his mind became clearer and clearer, the supreme king wants his nephew to become the king, then, then leave the throne to him. Jade City is long and narrow on the western-eastern side but is quite wide on the north-south line. Once someone has captured Stone Kingdom, then nobody can stop them from becoming the king. In the Stone Kingdom, in Ji Yu Shenwei's mind appeared the image of a weak thin young man. When he was younger, Slave Huan had been involved in the conspiracy against the royal family, during which the king had been killed and the final winner resulted in the second-born prince, the current king of Stone Kingdom. Ji Yu Shenwei had a premonition that the supreme king wanted to be connected with the Stone Kingdom by marriage. This was not an improvised plan since it had probably already been several years since Golden Rock Fort was secretly involved with the Stone Kingdom, and at that time he even unintentionally helped the supreme king a lot. Fang Wencha stopped beating his hand and stretched his arms. There was something he had been waiting to tell Dragon King for a long time. You can't let the Supreme King achieve his goals, but the only way to stop Golden Rock Fort, Dragon King, is marrying the princess. Chapter 324, Despondent Translator, Transan Editor, Transan In the evening, two men, one old and one young, both dressed like beggars, appeared at the residence of Dragon King. They were immediately discreetly brought to the back courtyard. The first thing they received when they arrived was a full meal. They were eating in a very different way, the young one devoured ravenously, he had not even swallowed the first bite when the second piece was already in his mouth. The old man was calmer. He drank some wine, took some food, and ah, repeating these three movements methodically. He seemed slower, but he ate more than his young companion. Tai Linglu, at the other side of the table, looked at the two uninvited guests, especially at the young one, as he had heard that had had once wanted to kill Dragon King. Afraid that his stomach would explode, Nizeng stopped eating and took a deep breath, raising his head for the first time. What do you want? Nizam told ruthlessly to the green-eyed girl, thinking that she was the monster accompanying Dragon King. Tai Linglong, shocked, 
sat up straight. His impression of that beggar was even worse, are you looking for revenge? That's right. I am Dragon King's personal guard, you'll have to go through me. Nizung sneered disdainfully, not caring a whit. I'll give you a chance right now. Come and fight. Tai Lin Long was furious. Standing up, she pulled out her saber. Nizun took one look at the new recognized Master Shifu. Who shining, as if he had not heard anything, did not stop eating and did not give any advice. Nizun patted his stomach, stood up and pulled out his short sword. His short sword was actually long and large, and it did not seem to suit him. Tai Ling Long snorted again. Before the young beggar could stand firmly, she suddenly slashed out with her blade before retreating. Nizung's sword fell to the ground. He looked down and saw a wound on his chest, one foot long. At first, only a few drops of blood seeped out, but soon, more and more blood flowed, soaking his clothes and dripping onto the floor. You, you cheated. Nizung terrified put both his hands on the wound, hoping to stop the bleeding. You idiot. Tai Lin Long coldly gave a lesson to the untactful beggar, machete skills are to kill people, there's no such thing as cheating. Nizung's face alternated between red and white, and looked again at his master Shifu. Who shining, finally satisfied, spit out, you are indeed an idiot, it's true what they say about you. After reprimanding Nizung, he turned to the young lady, and you are not smart either. Machete skills are used to kill people, why do you want to watch him bleed? You wasted such a good chance to kill. Tai Linglong wanted to explain why she had shown mercy but realized that this would contradict what she said before. She swallowed what she wanted to say, her impression of the old beggar even worse. Hu Shining picked up a pot of wine, and looking up, poured it into his mouth, then pulled Nizung's hands apart, sprayed a mouthful on the wound, then poured all the rest of the wine in the pot onto the wound to wash it. Nizen gritted his teeth through the pain, but Tai Ling Long looked cheerful. Hu Shining moved fast, before any new blood had gushed out. Pulling out a paper bag, as if by magic, he drew out an Jin Chuang ointment and spread some on Nizung's chest, and then bound the wound up with a piece of the young man's clothes. Chu Nanping, who had been standing in a corner all this time, came over and asked, Dragon King, will you be our master Shifu? Who Shining sat back on his chair, I don't know. Maybe, anyway I can't do anything else either. Is your technique good? Tai Ling Long asked immediately, as if doubtful of Dragon King's decision. Not so good, maybe not even as good as yours. Who Shining replied honestly. Then how can you be my master Shifu? Three days after becoming my disciple, I guarantee you'll never ask such a stupid question again. Tai Ling Long's face was red. Dragon King was severe, but he had never called her stupid. With her hand on the saber's handle, she thought about challenging the old beggar to a duel. Chu Nanping stood between them, if Dragon King invited him, it means that he must be something extraordinary. Tai Ling Long's face became even stiffer. We are still breaking up, I never promised I would make peace with you. But she did not pull out the saber and turned away. Chu Nanping had a melancholy expression. He regretted breaking up with his two good friends. Xu Xiaoyi forgave him easily, but Tai Ling Long did not seem to have any intention to do so. Nai Zeng covered the wound with his hand, what a boorish woman. Hu Shining did not agree, if well trained she will become even stronger than the two of you. Tai Ling Long circled around the courtyard to go to the Dragon King's office. She wanted to confirm if the old beggar was going to become her master. She was a disciple of Dragon King himself, what more did she need? As she reached the office, she heard the shaking head military counselor's voice. For the last two days, the military counselor was always bothering Dragon King, Dragon King this is not your personal affair. When the Supreme King became the king, the Great Snow Mountain lost their chance to fight with him. How about the Central Plain, what's their opinion? 
They agree with me. They hope that Dragon King will take on this responsibility. You know, the central plane is gathering their strengths, it is not suitable for a public conflict. Dragon King did not reply. Fang Wencha decided to risk provoking his master, Dragon King, you are still thinking about Shangguan are you, aren't you? Now she is Meng Wu's wife. It doesn't matter what other people say, the Meng family and the Shong family have recognized it too, and you should think for yourself now. The other party is Stone Kingdom's princess, she is of high enough status that your own will not be compromised. Please, don't mention her again. Dragon King's voice became cold. Counselor Fang knows his guilt, please forgive him. There was no fear in Fang Wenxia's voice. I heard that the princess of Stone Kingdom is still very beautiful. And even if she's a bit uglier, what are you afraid of? After a few years, you will get a whole country. Even if it was to a monkey, everybody would like to marry her. Tai Linglong could not bear to listen any longer. She pushed open the door and said, severely, no. Ji Yu Shenwei had already heard Tai Linglong's footsteps, though Fang Wencha had not noticed and was slightly shocked, who are you, how dare you to say no? This is a matter of national importance, not a child playing house. Get out. Tai Linglong was not afraid of the military counselor, and took two steps forward, you are a bad military counselor, specialized in coming up with bad ideas. When Dragon King wanted to save Sister Ayu, you did not agree. Now Sister Ayu had come down the mountain, but you still urge him to marry another woman, is Sister Ayu your enemy? Fang Wencha was a glib, but he was puzzled by the girl's words, this is ridiculous, why should we be enemies? I? Who are you anyway? What do you care who Dragon King is going to marry? I, Tai Linglong did not know what to say. She was that child saved by Dragon King. She had learnt how to use a saber with him, even if they could not be called master and disciple. The first day he taught her Kung Fu, Dragon King clearly said that he had personally killed her grandfather Tai Han Fong. But she did not bear any resentment towards Dragon King, and Dragon King had never suspected her. I am Dragon King's personal guard. Tai Linglong finally thought what she could say, so, so it's natural that I care about who Dragon King is going to marry, otherwise, when they are squabbling, how can I fulfill my duty? At these half-comprehensible words, Fang Wencha burst into laughter. Not only Dragon King did not thank her for her help, but he even sent her out, I have already invited the best training tutor. You and Little Chu won't be my personal guards anymore. Go back and learn how to be a killer again. I saw the old man. I? I don't like him. And I don't like his kid. You don't need to like him. Dragon King's cold voice was stern. You just have to learn what he teaches you. At this level, there's no way you can be my guard. Tai Linglong felt so aggrieved that tears came to her eyes. She turned around, ran to her room and pulling out her saber, started to swing it wildly. This was just a temporary careless. At the Golden Rock Fort she fell into the trap, why was Dragon King so angry? Become a killer, become a killer, hadn't she killed too? But Tai Linglong sat on the bed and remembered that she had not actually killed anyone. She sighed deeply, suddenly remorseful, and even began to doubt her strengths. Following that, something else happened that further revealed her weakness. She raised her head and noticed that there was someone else in the room, and she had not detected a thing. Tai Linglong jumped out of the bed and grabbed the saber when she recognized that it was Dragon King's new personal guard, Maid Lotus. Tai Linglong did not like Maid Lotus either. This woman who always hiding in the shadows made Tai Linglong feel uncomfortable. Like now, she suddenly appeared without saying a word. Furthermore, it had been Maid Lotus who had replaced her and Chu Nanping as Dragon King's personal guard. Without her, Tai Linglong felt things would be different. What are you doing in my room? Tai Linglong asked stiffly, 
not bothering disguise her hostility. Just looking at you. Made Lotus' voice was not loud and almost flat, but hearing it made people feel comfortable. Even though her face though was not smiling, her eyes were full of tenderness, making her look like an older sister. Somehow, Tai Linglong began to like her, but. You and I, we're not friends. Women are always familiar with each other. You just forgot. Tai Linglong has never heard something like that. She did not completely understand, but now, even the last trace of wariness towards Maid Lotus had disappeared, you are like a fairy. Maid Lotus was indeed like a fairy, mysterious and ethereal. Even if standing in the dark, there seemed to be a light shining from her body. What about Shangguan are you? Sister are you is a fairy too, but, you two are different, she is like, morning sunshine, you are like, evening sunset. Tai Linglong finished her sentence haltingly, then immediately added, you are both beautiful. Maid Lotus smiled, you are a lovely girl. Tell me, why are you sad? Tai Linglong was not so naive that she would open up to a stranger, but with Maid Lotus, she had a strong desire to reveal everything. Because Dragon King thinks I'm not good enough at Kung Fu and wants me to start from the beginning. And because Dragon King wants to marry a princess, but he should marry sister are you. Do you feel helpless? Tai Linglong nodded, suddenly her eyes brightened again, you have a plan, don't you? I have a plan. But I can't carry it out. Just tell me, I can do it. And even if Dragon King is not happy, he won't kill me. Tai Linglong's green eyes flashed with strange light, she could not wait to run into Maid Lotus arms. Actually, it's quite simple. Once your Kung Fu is good enough, you won't need to bow to Master Shifu. What more, if the princess no longer exists, Dragon King can't marry her. Tai Linglong suddenly understood, she was a killer, she has just complained that she has not killed enough people, but who most worthy to kill than the princess. However, my technique is not good enough, even if I start training now, there won't be enough time. I can help you. Can you? But Dragon King said that the sword technique depends entirely on me. You said I was like a fairy. Well, fairies naturally have some unique kung fu training methods. Then, will you help me? I will do everything you ask of me. You are too kind. Tai Linglong's breath came in gasps. Lotus Maid raised her right hand, holding a yellow pill in three fingers, take my elixir, it'll protect you as you practice and advance. This will surely make Dragon King sit up and take notice. Once you are done, killing will be a piece of cake. Chapter 325, Meet Me Death Scripture Translator, Transan Editor, Transan Zhong Ji, a teacher from the Golden Rock Fort sent a messenger to invite the Dragon King to a gathering at the South Wall Tavern. Shang Guanhong had mentioned Zhong Ji's wish to meet Ji Yushenwei several times, but Ji Yushenwei had not really expected to receive the invitation. He was, after all, the archenemy of the Supreme King. No one in Golden Rock Fort would dare to have anything to do with him. Zhong Ji had a lot of courage to choose to meet in such a crowded place like the South Wall Tavern. Ji Yushenwei actually wanted to meet the teacher as well. They were enemies now and had even crossed paths before. Shang Guanhong had killed Master Lianxin by disguising as Dragon King, and later, murdered Monk Lianye as well. It was very likely that he had done all these under the advisement of Zhong Ji. The old teacher's appearance had not changed much, he was just as serious and severe as before, as if he perpetually had a yardstick to pull out. Upon seeing Dragon King, he nodded slightly and motioned him to sit on the opposite side. It was early morning and there weren't many customers in the tavern except for the tired shop assistant sprawled on the table a distance away, fast asleep. No one else sends me fine wine in a more since you left the stone castle. Zhongji remarked, recalling fondly about the old times. 
The South Wall Tavern is completely free of charge for Mr. Jong from today onwards, Ji Yushenwei offered generously. He still harbored a glimmer of hope in his heart that he could bring Zhong Ji over to his side. I heard that your people had taken over the tavern from shopkeeper Liu. Yes. Alas, Zhong Ji said as he looked around, his expression was like a son who was about to leave home. What a pity. I cannot come again. By saying these words, Zhong Ji declared his hostility against Dragon King. His face became serious as he said, you are a wise man, and I am not stupid either. Let's go straight to the point. That would be best, Dragon King replied. Zhong Ji looked at the silent Dragon King and recalled Slave Huan, who had always come to ask for his advice. Deeply understanding the mercilessness of time, he knew that a stubborn old man like him had no more room to change, while young people would thrive, one generation after another. They would all be crushed to pieces on the old stone, he thought, and said, I came to ask for a favor. In return, I will tell you a secret. Please go ahead, Mr. Jong. Are you going to the Stone Kingdom to seek a marriage alliance on behalf of the Great Snow Mountain? Ji Yushan Wei nodded his head. Fang Wencha had succeeded, at least partly, in persuading Dragon King to join the team of them seeking marriage with the purpose of prohibiting Shangguan Fei from being the bridegroom instead of becoming one himself. In Fang Wenxia's eyes, it would be advantageous for the Great Snow Mountain and their hegemony goal for Dragon King to marry the princess and inherit the throne of the Stone Kingdom. Even if they failed to marry the princess, simply ensuring that Golden Rock Forts could not secure the marriage was good enough. This had already spread around the Jade City. People began to argue over who would be the winner between Dragon King and the ninth young master. Zhong Ji paused briefly, as if to show reluctance, but his tone was cold and ruthless when he spoke. Master Hong will accompany the ninth young master to the Stone Kingdom. If you can kill Master Hong during the journey, I will tell you a crucial secret. Ji Yushan had several hunches about Zhong Ji's goal, but this was beyond his expectation. Shang Guanhong possessed neither the ambition nor potential to become the next supreme king. Zhong Ji should have known clearly when he decided to assist Shang Guanhong from the beginning. Getting rid of him only after three years did not seem like Zhong Ji's way of handling things. This could be another conspiracy. Ji Yushan Wei knew the importance of pretending in front of the enemy, so he said, Apologies. The Great Snow Mountain and Golden Rock Fort are holding a temporary armistice right now. I will never break the agreement by killing someone from the Golden Rock Fort. Zhong Ji smiled grimly, if only Master Hong were half as talented as you, he would be able to hold up his head today. He stood up, not intending to persuade Dragon King any further. Instead, he said, the secret is with Master Hong himself. It is up to you to decide whether you want to know the secret, and how to obtain it. This was the first time Zhong Ji addressed Ji Yushan Wei as Dragon King since they met. He uttered the word with a slightly slower tone which seemed to show both respect and irony at the same time. Finally the senior glanced around the familiar tavern of South City and left without even bidding farewell to his former disciple. Zhong Ji is exactly the type of military counselor I want. Ji Yushan Wei thought to himself. Someone who can make plans, implement them, and is confident and concise. He definitely wanted to know what secret Shang Guanhong possessed, and also why Zhong Ji wanted to kill the master that he worked for. But he did not intend to get his answer by doing as Zhong Ji wished. In the backyard of the residence of Dragon King, Hu Shining was training the three teenagers. They were not allowed to use sabers but only allowed to hit each other on their backs with their legs. Tai Linglong managed to hit Nizong to the ground every time, and then raised her head to at the training tutor in defiance. She refused to train with Chu Nanping and when Hu Shining forced her to do so, she would just stand still instead. Ji Yushan Wei agreed with Hu Shining that the young girl had the potential to become an excellent killer. Hu Shining had taken up office in the residence of Dragon King once reaching a dead end, but he made a demand as well, 
I am only in charge of training the killers. I don't care what Dragon King uses them for. However, Jade City belongs to the Lord's territory, and I want to leave this place eventually. Ji Yushin Wei agreed. He had already built a secret base in Shulike, but the killers trained there were too unskilled and were in need of reorganization. Hu Shining was perfect for this job. Dragon King set out for the Stone Kingdom after New Year, during which Hu Shining also took the three teenagers to Shulike to train. This was what they agreed on. Nizan only desired to be stronger than Dragon King. Chu Nanping did not really care for anything but Tai Ling Long found it humiliating. However, she did not raise any objections. It seemed like she had accepted her fate. Shortly after Ji Yu Wei entered his bedroom, Jiang brought him a letter. Although she had been serving Dragon King for many days, she still could not stop herself from blushing and would often break things by mistake. There were only a few pieces of porcelain in Dragon King's room that were still intact. This time there was no exception. The letter slipped from her hands but Ji Yu Wei managed to catch it swiftly. Jiang apologized repeatedly and hastily ran to the other side of the room to wipe the already stainless table. Who sent this letter? It was Sister Yenwei's maid, Jiang muttered when she realized she had failed to mention such a simple thing when she delivered the letter. Her face blushed deeply once again. Ji Yushun Wei guessed that half of the blood in her body was concentrated on her head, which explained why she was so clumsy. The letterhead was sealed with red wax, without any mark on it. Ji Yushun Wei cut the letter open carefully from the other side with his dagger and pulled out the folded white paper. There were only three scrawled words written on the letter, which seemed like the handwriting of a little child. It said come and meet me. This did not look like Xu Yenwei's handwriting, much less her tone. Do you know the maid who delivered the letter? Yes, it was little Mai. She has come here several times. Jiang's eyes opened wide, confused at Dragon King's doubts. Ji Yushun Wei was busy with several other matters before he made his way to Pleasure Alley. He just happened to have business with Xu Yang Wei. The Stone Kingdom's current king had taken to Xu Yang Wei when he was exiled in Jade City. He even wanted to bring her back to his country, although, he wanted to take her life afterward. Ji Yushun Wei realized that Xu Yang Wei might be useful somehow, so he decided to take her to the Stone Kingdom with him. But he had not discussed it with her yet. The number one largest brothel in Pleasure Alley was already opened for business, and business was surprisingly good. The customers there were fond of holding a lady in each arm, and they would open the windows even in the cold winter just to show off to the famous prostitute Xiao Feng Chai, who was staying in the opposite building. Xiao Feng Chai had been a highly sought after prostitute for a long time which offended many of her peers and men who could not afford to be her customers. This day, the number one largest brothel had little business. It was not because the customers had gotten bored, but the owner had decided to take a day off and refused to serve the customers. Even the women worked for her were hidden away. How many days was it even opened for? Are you looking down on us just because you are the largest around here? The rejected customers complained bitterly as they were forced to leave the brothel. Ji Yushun Wei came in through the back door. Maid Little Mai was flustered upon noticing him and immediately went to greet him. She said, Thank goodness, you finally arrived, Dragon King. Please hurry upstairs. Where is your master? Ji Yushun Wei did not like this place, and he wanted to make it quick. She's serving the customer upstairs. Little Mai replied, pointing to the upper floor. Ji Yushun Wei frowned, to think, Xu Yang Wei was still serving a customer when she wanted him to meet her. This was really. Little Mai lamented in a low voice, I don't know the background of the customer, but I've never seen Madame Xu so scared. The customer was so demanding. Xu Yang Wei followed the example of Xiao Feng Chai and let her staff address her as Madam as well. Ji Yushun Wei was already on the stairs when he realized what Little Mai had said. 
He suddenly knew who had written the letter. He stopped immediately. He did not want to see her at all. Dragon King is here. Little Mai announced loudly. Ji Yu Shenwei had no choice but to continue walking upstairs. Xu Yang Wei was kneeling in front of a screen, and before she left the room, she made a face at Dragon King. Judging from the sweat beading her forehead, Xu Yang Wei must have suffered a lot. Behind the screen, a familiar voice called to Ji Yu Wei, You brat, how bold of you that you dare to come and meet me. Luo Ningcha walked out from behind the screen. She had not changed much in the last three years, except that she looked even more overbearing now. It was as if the whole world had succumbed to her beauty and even Ji Yu Shenwei had to admit that she looked even more attractive and alluring now. It was a pity that made Lotus's hidden weapon had failed to kill her that time. Ji Yu Shenwei shrugged indifferently, it's unwise for the eighth young mistress to come here. If the Supreme King hears about this, he will explode. I'm not afraid of him. Luo Ningcha smiled smugly, and then frowned and said, what did you just call me? Luo Ningcha did not like to be addressed as the eighth young mistress. All the people who worked for her had to call her miss. Miss, Ji Yu Shenwei did not intend to argue with her over these trivial matters, but his tone was getting colder and even more unfriendly. Luo Ningcha did not detect his impatience. She looked over at him and shook her head, sighing, what happened to you? You don't look so good. Your face is as pale as. Is the great snow mountain really so cold? What did you want to see me about, miss? Luo Ningcha became more arrogant, almost suffocating Ji Yu Shenwei with her oppressive air. She said, I saved your two young underlings. And I thank you for that. Thank you? A thank you is not enough. I am here for repayment for the deed that I did. Do you think that I would do anything for you for nothing? What do you want in return? Just name it, miss. Luo Ningcha seemed to lose her temper again. Ji Yu Shenwei could even tell from her breath that she was seething. Surprisingly, she restrained herself from venting her rage and smiled instead, so, you are the Dragon King now. Yes. And you trained thousands of people in preparation to fight against Golden Rock Fort. Something like that. Ji Yu Shenwei did not want to lie nor tell the truth. Having run out of patience, Luo Ningcha grabbed a teacup from the table and threw it at Ji Yu Shenwei. Ji Yu Shen did not avoid it. The teacup brushed past him, falling to the ground and smashing to pieces. I don't care. Luo Ningcha lost her temper. No matter what, you belong to me, and you need work for me. I have even given you my body, isn't that enough? You ungrateful brat, you should be on your knees. Knowing that Maid Lotus was hiding nearby, Ji Yu Shenwei wondered if it was time to signal for her to come out now. Even if this was reason enough for the Supreme King to launch a war, he would not hesitate to do so. Chapter 326, Break Off Translator, Transan Editor, Transan How could you negotiate peace with Golden Rock Fort? Luo Ningcha did not sense the danger lurking at all, and although she did not insist Dragon King to crawl over, her tone sounded like she was reprimanding a slave. The Lord still has two sons alive. You need to kill them off so that Chenga could succeed to the throne. Then we can discuss the peace negotiations, isn't it better this way? While Luo Ningcha was happily talking by herself, Ji Yu Shenwei was somewhat confused by her words. The Supreme King still had four sons left, perhaps she only acknowledged both Shangguan Enyu and Shangguan Fei and excluded Shangguan Hong the illegitimate son and third young master Shangguan Yun, who was imprisoned. As for Chenga, that should be the son that Luo Ningcha gave birth to. Luo Ningcha even softened her tone at the mention of Chenga, which was something that Ji Yu Shenwei found exceptionally rare. He's only two years old but he's already grabbing a wooden saber and running about, even the Lord praised him about it. Chenga is the tenth son of the Lord, and his name is Cheng, 
which echoes the prophecy of ten sons becoming king. I have a hunch that Chenga is going to become the supreme king, and I will be there to witness it. Golden Rock Fort belongs to him, it belongs to us both, mother and son. He's still so young, there's no need to rush. Ji Yushinwei couldn't hold himself back and reminded her, but soon regretted his words. Luo Ningchao was especially sensitive about this topic and immediately started to rattle on about it after being challenged. He's not young at all. Evil people will start to lay hands on him once he's older. I need to strike first to thwart the enemy and help my son to remove his obstacles. Anybody standing in his way will be eliminated. Slave Huan. Luo Ningcha spoke anxiously, calling the former name of Dragon King out of habit. You have to help me. Help me think of new ideas. You are the most reliable person for us to depend on, and once Chenna becomes Supreme King, he will have the power of life and death over many people. You can seek revenge and kill whoever you want. I want to seek revenge on Golden Rock Fort, therefore your son is my enemy as well. I won't help you. Ji Yu Shenwei stated matter-of-factly, he wanted to cut ties off with this woman using this plane and outright rejection. Also, how could anyone possibly fail to understand such a simple logic? Luo Ningcha narrowed her eyes as she was planning to throw something at Ji Yu Shenwei but instead walked towards him. Chenga is your child. She said, so close that Ji Yu Shenwei could feel her breath on his face. Ji Yu Shenwei was shocked. He must have had a really weird expression on his face as his mind ran wild. He also noticed something even weirder in Luo Ningcha's eyes. Luo Ningcha kept a straight face and was unprecedentedly serious. Then she let out a laugh, clutching her stomach, and was soon laughing until she was almost out of breath. Ji Yu Shenwei was furious. As Dragon King, he had never been teased like this before. His hand involuntarily went towards the handle of his saber. Luo Ningcha had a hard time trying to stop her laughter. She still didn't sense the danger lurking around her. Turning around and walking towards the screen, she said, in your dreams. How old were you back then? You expect me to give you a son? Is it even possible? Even if I count my ten fingers? Ji Yu Shenwei carried Luo Ningcha from behind and threw her onto the bed. Luo Ningcha screamed, you want to? Ji Yu Shenwei didn't want anything. He straddled atop her and tore her clothes off. Luo Ningcha struggled as she tried to resist. Lashing out at him in a low voice, she said, let go of me, you jerk. You are my slave. Don't you dare touch me without my permission. Her words angered Dragon King even more, and there was only one way to release this fury. He gave her a slap on the face without exerting too much force, but it still caused a rough flush. Luo Ningcha froze for a moment before she clenched her teeth and attacked the man on top of her like crazy. She strangled, bit, scratched and grabbed him, resorting to every conceivable way possible. Ji Yu Shenwei was not tender to her as well. Like a silent wolf, his actions were rough and forceful. He left patches of bruises on the delicate woman, rubbing and squeezing her like a soft dough. Like the snow of black and red colors mixing together, their clothes were torn into pieces during the fierce wrestling. Even while doing the deed, Luo Ningcha did not give up struggling. She added countless tiny bloodstains to Ji Yu Shenwei's already scarred body. Ji Yu Shenwei was very surprised that he still retained a strong memory of her body and knew how to fit in with her in order to get pleasure from it. After the first time, the two of them laid side by side on the bed, with nothing on their minds. And then, acting simultaneously without prior agreement, they did it again for the second time. After the deed, Ji Yu Shenwei realized he had no clothes to wear. Just as he was thinking about it, two sets of clothes were thrown in through the crack of the door. Xu Yang Wei was very sharp when it came to such affairs. Luo Ningcha pointed to a small scar above her right breast, 
this was stabbed by Maid Lotus, that traitor. I heard that she is still following you. Yes. Ji Yushun Wei replied, neither satisfied nor guilty. His anger was gone and he was calm again as he slowly put his clothes on. Avenge me, Luo Ningcha spat out these words, her tone brief and forceful, as though this was an order that could not be refused. No, Ji Yushun Wei answered briefly and forcefully as well. What did you say? Luo Ningcha sat up all of a sudden. She even forgot to cover herself with the quilt. I said no. Ji Yushun Wei replied coldly as he put his saber on his belt. Luo Ningcha was capricious, how dare you? I dare to because I am no longer your slave, and the same goes for Maid Lotus. I won't do anything for you. You are a foolish woman, and you have always been. You are not worthy of my service. Luo Ningcha was dumbfounded. The last time she was so frightened was when she heard about the death of Big Head Kingpin. After that, she had never been this afraid even when facing the Supreme King. Ji Yushun Wei was about to leave. He wanted her to wake up from all her fantasies, so he said, continue to let your son grow up. I won't kill him until he reaches the age of fourteen. Luo Ningcha could not recognize the man in front of her. In terms of looks, he was similar to Slave Huan, yet he completely turned into another person when he started talking. She did not know what or how to feel and actually said these words with a pleading tone, Slave Huan, you are the only one in my heart. It's true, ever since I was pregnant, I did not let the Lord touch me again. Ji Yushun Wei looked at this woman, she was the most famous and beautiful woman in Jade City, his former master, the miss who had brought him endless humiliation. His face was as cold as frost, then he said, that means nothing to me, and turned to leave. She was no different from anyone who could be killed by a saber and he felt nothing within his heart for her. Luo Ningcha collapsed on the bed and sobbed uncontrollably. She did not understand how had Slave Huan become so ruthless. What about the pleasure they had just now, was it all a dream? Her world was extremely simple, it was built swiftly and, therefore, it collapsed as easily as well. Xu Yang Wei tiptoed into the room quietly and sat on the edge of the bed. Her resentment towards the miss had disappeared, and her compassion for her overflowed excessively like a river. Men are all like this, she consoled. But even him, even he wants to betray me. Luo Ningcha still could not accept what had just happened. Dragon King is a man as well, and men are never loyal to women. Especially for men like Dragon King. They kill, fight, and conquer. Only sabers, blood, territories, and titles matter to them. Women are not a part of it. Never. Xu Yang Wei did not give much thought to her words when she tried to console the miss. But she also felt that her words were quite reasonable after she finished talking. Dragon King was probably already ambitious back then when he refused to sleep with her, she thought to herself. Luo Ningcha looked up at Xu Yang Wei, who was immersed in her thoughts. Such an expression really did not suit her, however, she was moved by Xu Yang Wei's remarks but women will always have a way to take revenge for themselves. Right? Xu Yang Wei herself already failed to keep up with her own train of thoughts. Startled from her deep thoughts, she said, What? Revenge? Our revenge as women is to see these men killing each other. Just wait for the winner to give us the most money. We don't need to do anything. You're right. Men will always kill one another, I am so stupid, Luo Ningcha said as she suddenly came to a realization. Why should I beg him? If they can settle for peace negotiations today, they might start fighting again tomorrow. Go and kill, then. Kill everybody off. Xu Yang Wei had nothing more to say, so she let the miss rest on her lap as she continued crying. Even the miss could not have everything as she wished. Xu Yang Wei thought to herself. Suddenly she doubted herself as well, 
Was she getting on in age? Why was she so sentimental all of a sudden? Maid Lotus made no comment on what Dragon King had done. She seemed to have completely severed her own feelings and cooperated with Dragon King purely as the managing master of New Moon Hall. Ji Yushun Wei carefully observed her every move but did not find anything unusual about Maid Lotus. Fang Wencha came running in during the evening with some bad news. We underestimated the Supreme King indeed. He must have planned to seek a marriage with the Stone Kingdom for a long time. I heard that all of Stone Kingdom was bought over by Golden Rock Fort, even the servants sweeping the palace floors are on Supreme King's side. The King of Stone Kingdom was weak and sick, and it's probably not by chance that he has no children. This is the day that the Supreme King has been waiting for after so many years of painstaking effort. Ji Yushun Wei thought about his master Shifu. Tai Hanfeng had spent ten years raising a major protector, only to kill and rob him of all his property when he retired. Golden Rock Fort had their own style of handling matters, and the methods used by Tai Hanfeng and the Supreme King were similar, just that the scale varied greatly. The Stone Kingdom is very important. Fang Wenxia was very sour about it. He did not count on Dragon King to marry the princess, but it was still a great victory as long as Golden Rock Fort's plan was ruined. He still could not bear to give up that piece of territory. The five kingdoms of Xiaoyao Lake, with the Stone Kingdom strategically located at the opening of imports and exports, taking down a kingdom would mean occupying all five kingdoms. This could save at least ten years of time in hegemony for the western region. I won't let the Supreme King have his way. Ji Yushun Wei comforted the military counselor, as a rough plan already formed in his mind. It's good that we have the support of the Central Plain. The five kingdoms of Xiaoyao Lake are friendly with the Central Plain and this can help offset some of the influence from Supreme King. The Central Plain will send out another special envoy to Xiaoyao Lake. You can join hands with him and tackle Golden Rock Fort. Shangguan Fei is incompetent so there's nothing fearful about him. It's a pity I still have to handle the peace negotiations and cannot accompany you, Dragon King. He could not conclude too early whether Shangguan Fei was incompetent or not. Ji Yushun Wei then told the military counselor his plan. Fang Wencha pondered for a moment after listening and actually nodded his head in agreement for once. I think this could work. Tai Han Feng robbed and killed the major protector that he had cultivated for ten years. The final beneficiary was not himself though, but his disciple, Slave Huan. Ji Yushun Wei gained a lot of inspiration from this story. Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. There were only a few drinkers in the small, filthy and dim tavern. Like a group of lions who had already eaten their fill, they would stare at every customer who walked in until they sat down, joining in as onlookers with the rest of the crowd to the next customer who walked in after. As soon as Ji Yushun Wei walked in, he noticed that traditions here were completely different from Jade City. These people were rude, and they lacked danger awareness, not knowing that their stares might actually get themselves killed. Shong Hung waved at him from the innermost corner that was dimmer than usual. Quite a good place you chose, yeah, Ji Yushun Wei spoke as he sat down, no longer being stared at by others. No choice, there's only this tavern around here, Chong Hung replied, smacking his lips with a dreamy expression on his face. Close your eyes and imagine here a south wall. I haven't gone back to that place for more than three years, and I really miss the fine wine there. Ji Yushun Wei noticed that Chong Hung used the word back. For someone who was not a resident of Jade City, but from the Central Plain, he had actually regarded Jade City as his home. Shong Hung was the assistant of the special envoy sent by the Central Plain to Xiaoyao Lake. He met Dragon King in private as old friends. It had been almost ten days since Ji Yushun Wei left Jade City. Located at the east of Jade City, this place was called Shuangxuan Village. It was the last courier station towards the south before entering the desert, but it was still within the border of the city. 
It would take about five to seven days to travel through the desert as it wasn't very big, and right across from it was Xiaoyao Lake. All the forces traveling toward the five kingdoms of Xiaoyao Lake would need to reorganize here. They could rest, store up clean water, and hire guides if needed. It was here that Ji Yushinwei joined the special envoy sent by the Central Plain as they prepared to leave for Xiaoyao Lake together. To him, Shonghang was glib and experienced when it came to officialdom, therefore Ji Yushinwei was slightly surprised when he noticed Shonghang looked somewhat shabby as if he had experienced some difficult times. He said, the fine wine in South Wall is still the same as before, but Lord Shong, you seem to have changed a lot. Ha ha, yes, it's getting worse by the day, but who could have imagined, Dragon King, Ji, Shonghang said in amazement. As if they had just met for the first time, his gaze was locked on Dragon King's face the whole time. I haven't thanked Lord Shong yet. I heard from the military counselor that you helped a lot. Ji Yushin Wei didn't really enjoy Shonghang's gaze and was perplexed because he wasn't so rude before. Hey, the gold belonged to you anyway. I was just helping to take care of it. I was beyond elated when you were willing to give me 20% as a remuneration. Dragon King, you are really smart. If you didn't write to tell me about the whereabouts of the gold, I would have thought you had transferred it all away, instead of it being buried underground. Ji Yushin Wei once assassinated Wei Lingmiao and buried carriages of gold into a big pit within the camp. According to the agreement, the gold was split into four four two parts, among himself, Shangguan Enyu and Shonghang respectively. Two years ago, when Ji Yushin Wei was on the run, he heard that Shangguan Enyu was very shocked by Slave Huan's origin and had the intention to join hands with his father to hunt the renegade down. He sent a letter to Shonghang and entrusted him to dig out the gold, offering it to Shangguan Enyu as a form of goodwill. At that time, Ji Yushin Wei had already decided that he could not allow the crack in Golden Rock Fort to heal again. If Shangguan Enyu was a small enemy to him, then his greatest enemy was Shangguan Fa. It ought to be so. I will need to rely on your help once again, Lord Shong. Shonghang looked around and said in a low voice, Don't expect too much from me, Dragon King, let alone the other guy. The other guy here referred to the special envoy for Xiaoyao Lake. The reason Zhongheng asked to meet Dragon King in private was to let him know more details about the special envoy. His motive for doing so was due to the 2,000 tales of silver that Zhongheng received every month from Dragon King without fail for a few years now. If there was a lapse in payment, it would also be supplemented afterward. Oh? Ji Yushin Wei already felt that the special envoy for Xiaoyao Lake had a lukewarm approach towards him but he did not know the reason for it. He is a close friend of Lord Wei and is very mindful of Dragon King. Wei Song is back in the western region again. Ji Yushin Wei's heart raced as he asked. Half of the revenge for the massacre of the Ji Yu family was related to Golden Rock Fort, and another half was related to Wei Song. He had always wanted to understand the truth behind it, however, that year, Ji Yushin Wei did not manage to seize him in time as Wei Song fled to Shulike and borrowed paths from Norland and returned back to the central plain. Shonghang nodded and answered, Yes, you need to be careful, Dragon King. Mr. Wei is now the commanding officer for the Western region. He is in control of the major political affairs in the Western region now. It's hard to say what is the central plain's approach towards Dragon King. Shonghang was also extremely vigilant towards Wei Song. When he was still the commandant under the governor, he almost died at the hands of Wei Lingmiao. He faked his death and escaped from Jade City with the help of Slave Huan. Finally, just when he was getting on track in the Central Plain Army, he knew his future would be unstable again upon knowing that Wei Song took on the role of commanding officer for the Western region. Will he let the Central Plain change their approach to support Golden Rock Fort instead? Of course not. The Central Plain will not change their main strategy, but honestly, he's not that supportive of Dragon King and the Great Snow Mountain.
The two of them chatted for a while more before they walked out of the tavern one after another as Shong Hung footed the bill. Fang Wenchu mentioned that there would be a lot of obstacles on this trip. His biggest assurance was banking on the support of the central plane, but even this was shot down unexpectedly. Not to mention that Ji Yushan Wei had not even stepped into the territory of Stone Kingdom yet. Xuanquan village was a very small village, with only about 30 to 40 households. The livelihood of the whole village was to provide clean water and guides for business trips that come and go. Winter was usually the off-peak season, however, this year's winter seemed different. Within a few days, there were already seven to eight teams gathered here and the numbers were increasing by the day. Several monks lined up and passed by the front of the tavern. Zhang Hung suddenly let out a sigh. The King of Stone Kingdom is probably bobbed down as we speak. They are the monks from the Four Truths Temple. Ji Yushan Wei remembered that there were no monks here yesterday. Four Truths Temple has a great influence on the Five Kingdoms of Xiaoya Lake. Several kings become monks at the temple after abdication. I bet these monks are going to the Stone Kingdom as well. This was yet another ominous sign that Golden Rock Fort was determined to get the throne of Stone Kingdom. The two of them bypassed the tavern and saw the Golden Rock flag waving high in the wind within steps. The ninth young master Shangguan Fei had arrived. Compared to the small troop that Ji Yu Shenwei brought, Shangguan Fei was almost bringing along a small army. Golden Rock Fort set up their camp just outside of the village, but their scale was almost like that of a village. Ji Yushan Wei bid farewell to Zhang Heng and went back. Lin Xiaoshan immediately came to report that there was a total of 200 people from Golden Rock Fort, and among them were 100 guards, with the rest being handymen for transporting the dowry. The monks from the Four Truths Temple came with Shangguan Fei as expected. After Lin Xiaoshan left, Maid Lotus came with updated news. There were fifty killers in Shangguan Fei's camp, meant to protect the young master full time. Even if ten princesses were waiting in the Stone Kingdom, Shangguan Fei would never leave North City or the Stone Castle if he was given a choice. In order to make him rest assured, Lady Meng even sent out all the guards available within her power. Fifty killers and fifty machete men were more than enough to start a mutiny in the Stone Kingdom. Ji Yu Shenwei brought thirty men, and most of them were swordsmen. Only Maid Lotus and Guan Shong came from New Moon Hall, while the rest remained in Jade City to deal with possible attacks. Ji Yu Shenwei still had to guard against Wild Horse as he was still at large. That evening, Ji Yu Shenwei unexpectedly received an invitation from Shang Guan Fei to meet him. The meeting place was chosen by Dragon King to show no signs of malice. Ji Yushan Wei chose the small tavern at the front of the village as the distance between their accommodations was almost the same. Everybody, from the manager to the customers was ousted out of the tavern. The place belonged to the border of Golden Rock Fort so the orders from the assassins in black carried a lot of weight. Shangguan Fei seemed very nervous. He wanted to laugh freely but could only get some hollow laughter out of his throat. I didn't expect that we would be competitors, Dragon King. Both parties could bring an attendant according to the agreement, so Shangguan Fei brought Shangguan Hong along. Although they were half siblings, looking at the way Shangguan Hong carefully stood with his hands at his sides, there was no difference between him and a slave. Zhang Ji already harbored intentions to abandon this unqualified master, and Ji Yushan Wei actually felt a little sympathy for the guy as he was probably oblivious of it. Shang Guan Hong pretended that he did not know Dragon King at all, and did not bother to even lift his head. Ji Yushan Wei's attendant, Lin Xiaoshan, stood dutifully behind Dragon King. I really didn't expect it. Ji Yushan Wei felt that it was a wrong move for the Supreme King to let his ninth son ask for the princess's hand in marriage. I didn't expect that you would actually be interested in the princess. Shang Guan Fei blushed. Only very few people know that he didn't like women, and unfortunately, Ji Yushan Wei was one of them, and he knew it very well. 
The peace negotiations are currently ongoing between the Great Snow Mountain and Golden Rock Fort. For now, we are at a temporary armistice, Shang Guan Fei said suddenly, sounding somewhat impatient. That's right. There is still half a month left before the temporary armistice ends. By that time, the peace negotiations will definitely be successful, without a break in between. Shang Guan Fei added immediately. I hope so. No matter what, the temporary armistice is now in effect. Yes. Not just in Jade City, but also in Stone Kingdom as well. Yes. Feeling a little relieved, Shang Guan Fei said, I believe in you, Dragon King. So, we are, competing uprightly, no using of ploys or schemes. Yes, no ploys or schemes, everything has to be under the sun, above board and forthright. Shang Guan Fei was deeply puzzled when Dragon King answered so readily until he understood what he actually meant. Compared to Dragon King, he was unable to be above board and forthright, that was his weakness. Shang Guan Fei looked similar to his sister in terms of appearance, thus he should be quite good looking if not for his shifty eyes and constantly evasive gaze. Ji Yushan Wei was perplexed, how could the difference be so vast between this pair of siblings? Let's make a deal, Dragon King. Shang Guan Fei hesitated for a moment, before finally deciding to state his real purpose. Ji Yushan Wei made no comment. Opposite him, Shang Guan Hong got the hint and retreated out of the tavern. After glancing at Dragon King, Lin Xiaoshan soon followed as well. With just the two of them left, Shang Guan Fei was even more nervous. He kept looking at the saber on Dragon King's waist. Then he said, you know, I have never once thought of becoming the prince consort or whatever, but these are the Lord's orders. I cannot defy him. Ji Yushan Wei kept silent. He could not fathom what deal Shang Guan Fei could offer him. As for me, in fact, I have no ambition. All I wanted was to continue to be the ninth young master safely and have no ambition to inherit the throne. Don't listen to the nonsense that people had been spreading. The Supreme King had only five sons left, one was in prison, another one turned traitor, another was illegitimate, and one more could not be publicly announced. Only Shang Guan Fei seemed normal on the outside and the throne did seem like it should belong to him. But Shang Guan Fei was most afraid of being targeted from all sides. What are you trying to say? Ji Yushan Wei was becoming impatient. Shang Guan Fei seemed to treat him as slave Huan still, which made him angrier by the minute. Very simple, Shang Guan Fei said as he took a step back. Give up the idea of killing me, and don't stop me from marrying the princess, I'll give you my sister. Looking at the furious expression on Dragon King's face, he immediately added, you can see her anytime. She's in the camp as well. Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. Ji Yushan Wei sneered coldly. Although he himself embraced and benefited a lot from the Shangguan family's motto do anything to achieve your goals, Ji Yushan Wei could not help despising the ninth young master upon hearing his ridiculous offer. He knew Shangguan are you well. She was obviously not the kind of woman who could be given to someone as a gift. Shangguan famous took the Dragon King's sneer for a sign of distrust and continued to explain. I can figure out a way to let my sister leave with you without being noticed. You just need to find a place to hide her. You're a son of the Supreme King. Ji Yushan Wei reminded Shangguan Fei of his identity. I know but it's not my choice. I'd rather be a son of an ordinary man. I wish to spend my life in peace instead of fighting my brothers to death for a meaningless title, said Shang Guan Fei. I don't believe you, Ji Yushan Wei said bluntly. He had never forgotten how the ninth young master, an expert at pretending to be weak while preparing for a surprise attack, had assassinated Shang Guan Yusha. Well, I understand. I lied to you inside the underground chamber of Body Garden, but this time it's different. You'll have enough time to wait and see how this thing will play itself out. 
I can offer you more information right now. Once the princess of the stone kingdom gets married, the king will give up his throne and become a monk. Have you seen the monks? They're going to shave his head. This has been decided a long time ago, said Shangguan Fei. In Ji Yushenwei's eyes, it was just a foregone conclusion that the king of the stone kingdom would abdicate after the princess's wedding, so he just replied matter-of-factly, well, it's good news for the future husband of the princess. Yes, but it's me who'll become the princess's consort. To be frank, I'm not interested in the princess, I'm just following my father's command. If I fail to complete this task, my life will be in jeopardy. You're different. No one will kill you if you fail to marry the princess. I might as well tell you that my father has prepared for this marriage for years. The king of the stone kingdom won't dare to allow anyone else to marry his sister. This thing is set in stone. Upon noticing that the dragon king looked displeased, Shangguan Fei immediately added, I'm not threatening you. I'm just telling you a fact, and I don't want to compete with you even when I'm sure to win this competition. Look, giving up this competition now won't cost you a thing, and you'll get my sister for free. I promise you that she's 100 times better than the princess. Ji Yushenwei would never trust Shangguan Fei no matter how sincere he appeared, but at the same time, he felt that it was not a bad idea to make peace with Master Fei for now. I might as well tell you a secret. The Golden Rock Fort thinks it has something on the King of the Stone Kingdom, but in fact, it's not the only one who knows the king's secret. You may not know that it was me who solved the murder case years ago, said Ji Yushenwei. Several years ago, when Ji Yushenwei had been a killer apprentice of the Golden Rock Fort, he had accused Guard Ju of murdering Prince Ju Gaotai to cover up the fact that the real murderer was the prince's younger brother, namely the current king of the Stone Kingdom. The Golden Rock Fort must have been using this thing to blackmail the King of the Stone Kingdom and push him around all this while, thought Ji Yushenwei. He knew that his guess was correct, since Shang Guanfei revealed a frightened expression when he mentioned the murder case. That's not the whole story, Shang Guanfei said hastily and seemingly in false bravado. He looked worried. I know some other secret stuff about the king. The Stone Kingdom has borrowed a huge amount of money from the Meng family. The country can never pay off its debts. In short, the king won't have enough nerve to let the princess marry anyone else except me. Even a coward can pluck up his courage when he's cornered, you should know best, said Ji Yushenwei. Shangguan Fei's cheeks flushed red and looked as if he was about to lose control of his emotions at any minute. He suddenly threw up his hands and asked, What do you want? Do you have to kill me? It wasn't me who killed your father. I don't even know who he is. Come on, think about it. How old was I when your father got murdered? I was still studying in the school at that time. Be reasonable, Dragon King. I'm even willing to give you my sister. What else do you want? Just tell me. I want a lot of things, said Ji Yushenwei, feeling that it was the time to end this conversation. Think again, what can you give me that is equal to the princess and her dowry? My sister, Shangguan face stuttered. Ji Yushenwei shook his head and walked toward the door. Shangguan Fei knew what the dragon king wanted, a country, which was not something he had to give someone else. Even so, he still held on to a small shred of hope as he said to the Dragon King, You can come to visit my sister at any time. She's been thinking about you all these years. While he was saying this, the Dragon King had already walked out of the tavern. Shang Guan Fei slumped down on the ground and buried his head between his arms, while repeatedly murmuring to himself I have to survive. After a while, he lifted up his head, revealing a blank expression. He seemed to have made up his mind and announced, I'll be alive and well. It was pitch dark outside, except for a few lonely lights flickering weakly in the surroundings. When Ji Yushenwei was walking toward the inn with Lin Xiaoshan, he saw two monks suddenly come out from behind a mud hut. 
The monks quickly left after giving the dragon king a glance, seemingly very wary of his presence. You go first, Ji Yushanwei said to Lin Xiaoshan. Lin Xiaoshan nodded in agreement and went back to the inn by himself. He knew that the Dragon King was a very secretive person and a first-rate Kung Fu master who did not need his protection. Ji Yushanwei watched the monks walking away and then saw Shangguan Fei come out of the tavern. Failing to find Shangguan Hong waiting for him outside the tavern, Master Fei stomped angrily and then headed for his camp outside the village. After the ninth young master's departure, Ji Yushanwei went behind the mud hut. There were two people waiting for him. Maid Lotus stood beside Shangguan Hong with a sword in hand. The monks interrogated him just now. I heard them mention your name, Maid Lotus said to the Dragon King. Shangguan Hong looked as if he was drunk and nauseous. To support his trembling body, he leant against a wall and put his hands on his knees. He raised his head to cast a glance at the Dragon King, while saying, they want to avenge Lianhua and Lianye's death. Strange enough, they've waited for such a long time before taking revenge on me, said Ji Yushanwei nonchalantly. It seemed that he was not surprised at all to hear that even monks could not let go of their hate. Shang Guanhong was somewhat irritated by the Dragon King's indifferent attitude and said, the monks just want to find evidence first. Besides, they won't let you off easily. I didn't kill the monk, retorted Ji Yushan Wei. Well, but they believe that you caused the death of those two monks. They're determined to hold you accountable, said Sheng Guan Hong. Wow, they're indeed monks from the Four Truths Temple, it's typically overbearing of them. What about you? Did you tell them everything, asked Ji Yushan Wei. Tell them what? Sheng Guan Hong was still trying to tough it out. Ji Yushan Wei approached him and whispered into his ear, You didn't work to kill Slave Qing quickly enough. He told me lots of things. These words staggered Shang Guan Hong. He held the wall and looked as if he was about to throw up at any minute. When he finally straightened his back, he was pale and listless. So you know everything? Ji Yushan Wei did not reply to Shang Guan Hong's question. He would never tell Shang Guan Hong the truth, he had no chance to ask Slave Ching any question when he realized that it was the slave who had poisoned the monks. That's Zhong Ji's idea, Shang Guan Hong was vexed and began to ramble. I told him that you knew about our secret, so he asked me to kill you. He suggested that I should achieve that goal with the help of the powerful Four Truths Temple. So you pretended to be me and killed Master Lianhua in North City. Before that, you paid Slave Ching to poison the monks. After the incident, you managed to set Shang Guan Fei against Slave Ching and tricked him into killing the slave for you, said Ji Yushan Wei. Shang Guan Hong slapped himself hard across the face and said, I'm such an idiot to believe that Zhong Ji's plan was perfect. It didn't work at all. Is it Zhong Ji's idea to kill Lian Ye? asked Ji Yushan Wei. Yes, when you requested to meet me, Zhong Ji said that you must have noticed something. To ensure our success, he asked me to appeal to Lady Meng for help. Lady Meng sent three killers to protect me. They killed Lian Ye. Most of the information provided by Shang Guan Hong matched Ji Yushan Wei's deductions, but none of them were what he really cared about. I met with Zhong Ji before leaving the city. I knew about that. Shang Guan Hong replied, seemingly not bothered it. He asked me to kill you and he told me that you possess an important secret. Upon hearing that, Shang Guan Hong's mouth was agape. Suddenly, he chuckled and said, It's so funny. What's so funny? asked Ji Yushan Wei. Before I left the city, Zhong Ji warned me that you might want to drive a wedge between him and me. I'm surprised that he's right. This old man is so smart, said Shang Guan Hong. Ji Yushan Wei decided to give up this conversation after hearing Shang Guan Hong's words. Evidently, Shang Guan Hong would not believe him no matter what he said. He had to admit that Zhong Ji outsmarted him this time. If he wanted to get the secret, 
he could only kill Shang Guanhong as Zhong Ji had requested. Believe it or not, I won't kill you, said Ji Yushun Wei. Of course, I'm still useful to you, Shang Guanhong winked at the Dragon King and said. You want to marry the princess? I think I can help you, and if everything goes smoothly, I'll tell you the secret mentioned by Zhong Ji. Given this, you'd better help me out when the monks take actions against me. With these words, Shang Guanhong melded into the darkness. After returning to the inn, Ji Yu Wei still could not figure out what Zhong Ji was playing at, he could not even be sure if the old teacher really wanted Shang Guanhong dead. The monks have great kung fu, said Maid Lotus, who had been staying beside him all this while. Her words wakened him from his deep thought. How many monks can you take on at a time? asked Ji Yu Wei. Three, replied Maid Lotus. Ji Yu Wei had seen a total of twelve monks during the day. If all of them could be deemed as kung fu masters by Maid Lotus, the team of monks would be second only to the Golden Rock Fort's team in terms of combat capability among all the teams here. Ji Yu Wei felt that it would be prudent to have a discussion with the monks. After all, he did not kill Lianhua and Lianya and should not be considered an enemy by the monks. Surprisingly, the monks came to him instead. Two monks carried a heavily wounded man into his room, while the other two guarded the front and back of the group. He wants to meet the Dragon King, said a middle-aged monk gruffly. He looked as if he did not want to come here at all. I don't know this guy, said Ji Yushin Wei, after giving the wounded man a glance. The man was dressed in ordinary clothes, but Ji Yushin Wei was sure that this man was a killer. That's none of our business. We discovered him outside the village, and he insisted on meeting the Dragon King. That's why we brought him to you, said the middle-aged monk, while getting increasingly impatient. He gestured for the other monks to put the wounded man down at the Dragon King's door and turned around, preparing to leave this place. Before his departure, he added, I'm Lianqing. Lianhua and Lianye are my seniors. Both of them are my friends, said Ji Yushin Wei. I don't think so, Lianqing replied, putting heavy stress on each word and then strode away. Ji Yushin Wei lowered his head to look at the wounded man. He was 100% sure that he had never met this man before. The man was unconscious and had several deep wounds on his back, which had been patched up by the monks. At this moment, there was some blood oozing out of the wounds again. Maid Lotus walked out of the darkness and whispered to Ji Yushin Wei, he works for me. The New Moon Hall had planted a dozen spies inside the Golden Rock Fort, and this man was one of them. Upon seeing the Dragon King and Maid Lotus carrying the man into the room, Lin Xiaoshan immediately led the other people out. Maid Lotus swiftly fished out a green pill from the front of her coat. This was blood coagulation pill which was used by the New Moon Hall to control its disciples. Poisonous substances could often be used as an effective antidote under certain conditions. Shortly after Maid Lotus made the man swallow the pill, he came back to his senses. However, his eyes were glassy, and it looked as if he was unable to recognize the woman in front of him. Speak, ordered Maid Lotus. At this moment, she was playing the role of managing master of the new moon hall instead of the dragon king's friend and guard. Upon hearing Maid Lotus order, the man's eyes brightened. Don't go, while saying this, he seemed to think of something more important and jumped to another intelligence report. The Supreme King plans to exterminate. Before he finished his sentence, blood gushed out of his mouth, not even an elixir of life could not save him now. Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. Ji Yushin Wei sat on horseback at a small mound as he gazed far ahead in the direction of the desert. Behind him, the ten teams were forming up and leaving Xuanchuan village in a long procession. It was the first day of their journey to the Stone Kingdom. Suddenly, the children who had been running and giggling beside him stopped playing and pointed their fingers at the sky while shouting, Eagle! There's an eagle. Ji Yushin Wei looked up and saw a black eagle flying unsteadily above in the sky. 
It looked as if it was about to lose its balance and fall to the ground at any minute. It's injured, said some child. No, it has been entangled by a snake, said an elderly man. He was the most experienced guide in this village and would be leading the teams across the desert. Upon hearing the elderly man's words, the children all looked up while shading their eyes with their hands. They quickly spotted a colorful snake in the eagle's beak. The snake refused to give in to the bird and tightly wrapped itself around the eagle's body. During such a life and death struggle, the victory would always belong to the one who was more persistent. It's not a good omen, the guide muttered to himself. We shouldn't take this route during this season. Omens themselves are neutral, one man's meat is another man's poison, Ji Yushinwei said while watching the eagle fighting the snake. The guide was deeply impressed by the Dragon King's words and bowed to him while saying, You're right, Dragon King. Let's hope that it's a good omen for us. Before the outcome of their fight was decided, the eagle had flown away from the scene with the snake in its beak. The team dispatched by the Golden Rock Fort took its position at the head of the procession and was leading the other teams out of the village. Ji Yushinwei did not see anyone who looked like Shangguan Ayu in the team. He thought that she must have disguised herself. After the Golden Rock Fort's team came the special emissary from the Central Plains and his entourage. The special envoy warmly greeted the Dragon King, while Zhong Heng, who was also on the special envoy's team, just slightly nodded to the youth without saying a word. Behind them were several merchant caravans, followed by monks from the Four Truths Temple. All of the monks traveled by foot with big bags on their backs. They had come to Xuanxuan village together with the Golden Rock Fort's team, but surprisingly, they did not team up today. Amongst them was an elderly monk who was thin but looked hale and hearty. He walked with his fellow monks while carrying a package on his back. According to the news that Ji Yushunwei had gotten beforehand, this monk was named Feiyan and he was the master Shifu of Lianhua, Lianxin, and Lianye. Ji Yushunwei was not sure whether this monk joined this journey on purpose or by accident. Unlike the other monks, who deliberately ignored the Dragon King, Feiyan, a total stranger to the young man, nodded to him while walking past. At the end of the procession, was the Great Snow Mountains team led by Lin Xiaoshan, which consisted of more than thirty people. Guan Xiong had used some makeup to change her looks, allowing herself to blend in with the crowd. Maid Lotus was the last to leave the village. She rode up to Ji Yushinwei saying, Many people in the six caravans have suspicious backgrounds, but none of them look like killers from the Golden Rock Fort. The Supreme King won't send any killers to assassinate me here. He'll never want to bear the blame for breaching the truce agreement, said Ji Yushinwei. No matter whom he has sent here, we won't have enough manpower to cope with them, said Maid Lotus. Among the thirty team members of the Great Snow Mountain, only three people had great kung fu. Compared to the Golden Rock Fort, the Dragon King did have a rather weak team here. Given that, we can only strike first to gain the initiative, said Ji Yushinwei. Upon hearing this, Maid Lotus smiled, since this was exactly what she was thinking about. She quickly determined the first target and said, We can start with that small caravan. It has only fifteen people, and they look more anxious than the others. Ji Yushinwei agreed since he himself had also noticed this strange team. Although all the members of the team were dressed in long robes like ordinary businessmen, their riding posture, their strong and steady hands and the looks on their faces clearly indicated that they were not common people. Let's act tonight, said Ji Yushinwei. It was winter. When night fell, it was particularly cold and quiet in the desert. The ten teams pitched camp together for the night and the tents of the Golden Rock Fort's team occupied nearly half of the campground. Toward midnight, Ji Yushinwei and Maid Lotus sneaked out of their tent and went to meet with Guan Xiong, who had been keeping watch on the small caravan for them all this while in the northeastern corner of the camp. When they arrived, Guan Xiong nodded to them, signifying that everything was all right and there was no trap. 
After having fulfilled her responsibilities, Gwen Shong retreated to her own tent, leaving matters to the two killers. The fifteen members of the small caravan were split evenly into three tents. Ji Yushan Wei and Maid Lotus intended to use knockout powder on them before sneaking into their tents to cut off their heads. Before they took action, they spent a little bit of time observing their target out of habit. What happened next proved that this was prudent. Fourteen people crept out of the three tents in groups of two or three, their faces concealed. They nodded to one another and then headed for the southeastern corner of the camp. That corner was occupied by the Great Snow Mountains team. It seemed that these masked men also planned to launch an attack tonight. Ji Yushinwei and Maid Lotus exchanged a knowing look with each other and then took a detour to the southeastern corner, preparing to block and eliminate their enemies when they retreated from that place. To their great surprise, when they arrived, they discovered that the target of the fourteen masked men was not the Great Snow Mountains team but the monks from Four Truths Temple. The twelve monks, who were planning to meditate through the night, did not need too much space. Therefore, they had pitched only two tents. The masked men left two men standing guard outside each tent, and then the rest of them split into two teams and rushed into the two respective tents. This was an amateur assassination technique which could only succeed when used on ordinary victims. Against the twelve highly skilled monks, it was akin to courting their own death. The fight in the tents had lasted for a very short period of time before the defeated masked men dashed out of the tents and fled. Upon hearing the noises from the fight, the people in the neighboring tents woke up with a start and ran out to check the situation. Such chaos happened to provide coverage for the masked men. At this moment, the middle-aged monk named Lianqing stepped out of his tent and said in a loud voice, don't panic. It's just a group of hooligans sneaking into our tents. We've already defeated them and driven them away. Everybody in our tents is fine. The chaos quickly died down before reaching a climax, but no one in the camp actually believed Lianqing's explanation. As they were in an uninhabited desert now and with a golden rock flag fluttering over their camp, everyone was clear that no hooligan would dare to approach and that it must have been some people inside the camp who had attacked the monks. However, as Lianqing had made it very clear that the monks did not want to track down the intruders, nobody wished to trouble himself. The moment the masked men had broken into the monks' tents, Ji Yushinwei and Maid Lotus had sneaked back to the northeastern corner of the camp to hide, waiting for the masked men to come back. About one hour later, the masked men returned to their tents. Ji Yushinwei and Maid Lotus could hear them discussing together in whispers. I've never expected the monks to have such great kung fu. What can we do now? How about turning back? We're only one day's journey away from the village. But we've received the money. How can we report back to our client without getting the thing? Let's wait for another opportunity. We've been too hasty this time. The Golden Rock Fort, the Dragon King, the monks and Xuan Xiong, no one in this camp is easy to deal with. Once they fight against one another, we'll get a chance to acquire the thing in the chaos. Yeah, that's right. We don't need to exert ourselves. Ji Yushinwei and Maid Lotus gave up their attempt to kill the masked men and returned to their tent. Guan Shong was there waiting for them. After your departure, two batches of people successively came here to spy on us. Both left this place quickly. It's probably because they found out that you had left this tent, Guan Shong said in a low voice. I know who's hired by the Golden Rock Fort to kill me Zhuang Chiong. I killed his brother, Zhuang Hong, said Ji Yushan Wei. Long Machete God Zhuang Hong, leader of a small gang of bandits, had fallen under Ji Yushinwei's saber two years ago. His brother, Chuang Chiong, who was also a leader of a bandit gang, had once openly claimed that he would have avenged Chuang Hung's death by killing Yang Huan. However, Ji Yushinwei had never encountered the bandit during the past few years and neither had he heard any information about this man after becoming the Dragon King. 
Xuang Qiong is not a first-rate kung fu master. His saber skills are noticeably inferior to his brother, added Maid Lotus. As managing master of the New Moon Hall, she knew many kung fu masters in Western region. That's why he waited until today. He only dares to take his revenge on me when he's backed by a powerful person, said Ji Yushun Wei. Both Maid Lotus and he were more interested in Xuan Qiong and did not care much about the fight between the masked men and the monks. The next morning, the ten teams continued to travel together. Lin Xiaoshan, who knew many machete men in this procession, spent the whole day collecting information upon the orders of the Dragon King but he still failed to find any clue about the whereabouts of Xuan Qiong. In the evening, when the teams pitched camp, Shang Guan Hong came to visit Ji Yushun Wei. He was sent here by Shang Guan Fei. Although he hated this job, he dared not reject the ninth young master. Dragon King, the ninth young master is looking forward to your response. His offer to you is still valid, said Shang Guan Hong. Tell him that I'm still thinking about it, replied Ji Yushun Wei. We don't have much time left. Ah, I mean, this is what the ninth young master said to me. Once we arrive in the Stone Kingdom, you'll have little choice, said Shang Guan Hong. I know. Ji Yushun Wei still refused to give a clear answer. After delivering the message to the Dragon King, Shang Guan Hong heaved a sigh of relief, and then he looked at the Dragon King while saying, To be honest, I'm very grateful to you. I told you all my important secrets, and you've kept them for me all this while even when you were being pushed so hard by Lady Meng. You really saved my life. I'm always cautious in my speech, said Ji Yushun Wei. Yes, and you always keep your promises. Dragon King, please tell me the truth. Do you really want to kill everyone in the Shangguan family, including me, asked Shangguan Hong. As long as the truce agreement is valid, I won't kill anyone from the Golden Rock Fort said Ji Yushun Wei. Yes, but everyone knows that the so-called peace talks are just a cover. The Lord agreed to a ceasefire because he wants to make a good impression on the countries of Western region. As such, the ninth young master can successfully marry the princess. As for you, the Dragon King, you just used the peace talks as a ploy to gain time and advantage. You intend to accumulate strength and launch a counterattack on the Golden Rock Fort. Am I right? asked Shang Guan Hong. If you think that you already know everything, why bother to ask? replied Ji Yushun Wei. It's just that I don't believe you really want to kill all members of the Shang Guan family. At least, I know that you can't kill someone in our family, Shang Guan Hong smiled knowingly at the Dragon King and said. I hope that I can also become a person that you're unwilling to kill. What happened in the stone castle? What makes you guys, sons of the Supreme King, suddenly become so eager to betray the Golden Rock Fort? asked Ji Yushun Wei. Nothing happened. Everything has not changed. Shang Guanhong appeared somewhat irritated and said, I'm still the same old me, except for my given name, which has been changed from Hongye to Hong. Zhongji has been working hard for the past three years but still failed to build me up. To be honest, I'm tired of all this, especially that old woman, who treats me like a slave, yells at me and even forces me to serve her son. Shang Guanhong breathed a long sigh and continued, I don't even have the chance to take an oath of loyalty to the Supreme King. How can I betray him? I just want to, find my own way out. I'm always ready to offer you such a way, Ji Yushun Wei replied in a calm tone as if he was talking to a desperate fugitive. Shang Guan Hong's face lit up, and he hurriedly added, I'm also willing to work for you. To show my sincerity, I can give you a piece of information now. The ninth young master plans to trap you in this desert tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. With these words, Shang Guan Hong excused himself. Ji Yushun Wei was deeply perplexed at why Shang Guan Hong and Shang Guan Fei, sons of the Supreme King, feared him so such. These two young masters are guarded by lots of professional killers and machete men, but both of them seem to firmly believe that they'll be assassinated during this journey. 
They even kept imploring me to be gracious to them. What a strange thing. Bound by the terms of the truce agreement, the Dragon King could not assassinate anyone from the Golden Rock Fort during this competition to win the princess's favor. This was a fact known to all. Given that, it seemed very ridiculous that these two young masters of the Shangguan family dreaded him so much. The piece of information that Shangguan Hong had leaked to the Dragon King quickly proved to be true. The next day, the Great Snow Mountains team did run into trouble. Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. Monk Feian was the type of person who somehow always appeared superior to you. If you were a beggar, you would feel inferior to him. If you were a king, you would still look up to him with veneration. He was always a notch better than you, no matter who you were or what you did. In the meantime, he naturally maintained an approachable attitude without being condescending. Ji Yu Shenwei felt somewhat nervous in front of this monk. He never dreaded fierce-looking opponents, such as Lian Qing, as he believed that he could always take them on. Nevertheless, when confronted with Fan Yang, he felt helpless as if he were an exhausted leopard chasing a prey who always managed to stay one step away. The moment Ji Yu Shenwei stepped into Feiyan's tent, the skinny monk smiled knowingly at him, seemingly having predicted the young man's arrival a long time ago. Ji Yu Shenwei disliked the monk's attitude very much, as the monk behaved as if he already had everything under his control. Lian Qing was standing beside Feiyan, breathing heavily as growls emanated from his throat. He looked like a fierce guard dog which was ready to open its mouth and tear the intruder into pieces at any minute on behalf of his master. Lian Qing, relax. The Dragon King bears no ill will, said Feiyan. Surprisingly, the skinny monk had a very soft and gentle voice. Upon hearing his master Shifu's remarks, Lian Qing put his palms together, bowed to Feiyan and drew aside to join the meditating monks. There were six monks inside this tent. Feiyan sat in the middle, with two monks sitting on his left and three on his right. Lian Qing was now sitting on the second meditation cushion on the right. For a moment, Ji Yu Shenwei really wished to tell the monks bluntly that he was indeed bearing some ill will but he quickly banished the thought away since he did not want to act in such a juvenile manner. He nodded slightly to Feiyan and said, I've come to meet you, Master Feiyan. I want to make a deal with you. In Ji Yu Shenwei's eyes, everything could be discussed. He needed to win the monks over as temporary allies, so he came here to visit Feiyan right after Shangguan Hong's departure. Ah, it's a good deal, but we can't agree to it. Feiyan firmly refused the Dragon King before hearing the young man's proposal and acted as if he had seen through the Dragon King's mind. Ji Yu Shenwei had intended to work together with the monks to fight the bandits, since some of these bandits planned to kill him, and the others wanted to snatch something from the monks. Master Feiyan, do you think that I'll be defeated? asked Ji Yu Shenwei. No, I believe you can defeat all your enemies, Dragon King. However, you've a particularly strong killing intent. I dare not get too close to you, said Feiyan. Ji Yu Shenwei glanced at the monks who were meditating beside Feiyan and mocking them, I'm pretty sure that they'll display strong killing intents too once they get pissed off. They're different from you, Dragon King. Your killing intent keeps growing stronger while theirs has already showed signs of abating. Ji Yu Shenwei was well aware that Feiyan was just packaging his refusal in a friendly manner and said, Well, masters, I have to excuse myself. Have a good rest. With these words, Ji Yu Shenwei stepped backward toward the entrance of the tent. Feiyan smiled and fixed his eyes on the young man, as if he had already known what the Dragon King was going to do next. Ji Yu Shenwei did not believe that this monk was really able to read his mind. He promptly drew out his five peak saber and stabbed at Lian Qing, who was sitting in a meditation position beside Feiyan with his eyes closed. This strike was enough to kill a first rate kung fu master in Jianghu, but it was stopped by someone using only a few fingers. Feiyan moved even faster than the Dragon King and used three fingers to stop his saber. Dragon King's saber is impressively quick, 
Dragon King, said Feiyun. You indeed have incredible internal strength, monk, said Ji Yushun Wei. He did not feel much energy coming through the monk's fingers, but no matter how hard he tried, his saber still could not pierce through the defense of the monk. Impressive, Ji Yushun Wei praised Feiyun's kung fu, before suddenly drawing back his saber and stepping to the right to strike at Lianqing again. Lianqing remained in deep meditation with his eyes closed, seemingly oblivious to his surroundings. However, his eyebrows began to knit together at this moment. Feiyun quickly moved to stop the Dragon King and used the same move to block the young man's saber once again. Just as he was about to speak, he realized that he had been set up. He suddenly heard a sharp weapon ripping the tent wall behind him and then saw a dark shadow darting toward him. Before the other monks realized what was going on, the shadow retreated as fast as the wind, leaving only an open gash in the tent. Feiyun released the saber and retreated to his meditation cushion. As he took a seat on the cushion, he said, Congratulations to you, Dragon King. Your assistant has superb kung fu. The five monks sitting beside Feiyun could no longer focus their minds on meditation. They opened their eyes and discovered that the part of garment covering Feiyun's ribs had already turned red with blood. Upon seeing this, Lianqing roared with anger. When he was about to spring at the Dragon King, Feiyun stopped him by saying, No, Lianqing. I've told you that the Dragon King bears no ill will. But, Master Shifu, Lianqing did not want to let the Dragon King off so easily. The Dragon King has already recognized you. It's a good thing for you. Now you don't need to conceal your identity anymore, said Feiyun. Suddenly, Lianqing's face changed. Master Shifu, I, he stuttered. Ji Yushun Wei stood at the entrance of the tent with unsheathed five peaks saber in hand and said, You've sacrificed a lot for your revenge plan during the past two years. You even shaved your head and became a monk for it. Ever since hearing the name Shuang Chiong, Ji Yushun Wei could sense that someone's face kept coming up in his mind. After spending a whole day recollecting his memories, he finally realized that it was that of Lianqing. According to Shang Guanhong, the monks from Four Truths Temple planned to kill him during this journey to avenge the death of Lianhua and Lianye, but he could not understand why the monks hated him so much, since those two monks' death was not directly caused by him. However, as a person who had also suffered from the pain of losing his close relatives, he could recognize the intense hatred in Lianqing's eyes when he first met the monk. Ji Yushun Wei believed that Shang Guan Fei must have been planning to use Lianqing to kill him in this desert and he had better strike first. That was why he had asked Maid Lotus to work together with him to kill Feiyun, the monk's protector. Beyond his expectations, Maid Lotus failed to kill Feiyun with one blow. She withdrew immediately after wounding the elderly monk. This was a habit she had developed during her killer career. Ji Yushun Wei knew that now she was probably hiding somewhere nearby, preparing to launch another attack. Very impressive, Dragon King, Lianqing said coldly. You've seen through my disguise. I was indeed known as Xuanqiong before becoming a monk. By now, the other monks had already finished dressing Feiyun's wound. A dull red flush suffused the skinny monk's face when he asked, Lianqing, now the murderer of your brother is standing right in front of you. What are you going to do? Lianqing turned around to bow to his master Shifu and his seniors and then said, I'm deeply grateful to you for teaching me so much during the past two years, master Shifu, but I still can't let go of my hate. I'm really sorry to let you down. Feiyun still looked as calm as before, as if he did not feel disappointed at all. The flush on his face began to fade away which meant that his wound was all right now. You're no match for the Dragon King, said Feiyun. I don't care. He killed my brother, so I have to kill him. Lianqing glared at the Dragon King and shouted. In this moment, he completely forgot about his master Shifu's teachings. He was not monk Lianqing but bandit Xuanqiong now. 
Ji Yushunwei could have launched a surprise attack on Lianqing and killed him when he was speaking, but he did not strike and instead walked out of the tent, waiting in the open for the monk. Lianqing tore up his shirt, revealing his muscular upper body and a tattoo of a dragon engaged in fierce combat with a tiger covering his chest. He then drew a long knife out of his backpack, which was used by the monks to make clothes, and strode out of the tent, determined to fight the dragon king till death. Upon hearing the noise, all the monks in the neighboring tent came out. They were shocked at the scene before their eyes, but they could not interfere in this situation as their master Shifu Feian did not give them any order. In the end, they just pushed up the flap covering the entrance of the tent to let their master Shifu watch the fight happening outside. A dozen businessmen also came to watch the fight. They maintained quite some distance from Lianqing and the Dragon King and each of them reached into his own robe to grab his weapon, preparing to join the fight at any minute. Did my brother offend you before? Lianqing asked harshly. After having suppressed his anger for more than two years, he wanted to ask the Dragon King all the questions he had about his brother's death. No, I'd never met him before I killed him, Ji Yushunwei shook his head and replied. Did he block your path? No, it was me who came at him, and not the other way around. Then why did you kill him? Lianqing raised his voice. Their conversation attracted more and more onlookers. Upon seeing this, those businessmen removed their hands from their robes. Because he had great kung fu. I needed to kill such a kung fu master to improve my sword craft. Ji Yushunwei continued to speak in a calm and neutral tone, as if everything he said was a grain of common sense. Ha ha. Lianqing flared with anger and then said with a laugh, to improve your sword craft. What a reasonable explanation. Today, I'll kill you to improve my machete skills. Usually, Ji Yushunwei never talked so much with his opponent, but when he glanced across at Feiyan, who seemed to be reciting some Buddhist incantation inside the tent, he decided to continue this conversation. Did you and your brother always kill people for very valid reasons? Of course, shouted Lianqing, but almost immediately he realized how hypocritical he sounded, so he added, my brother and I were bandits. If we didn't kill anyone, how could we get our loot? I'm a killer. If I don't kill anyone, how can I improve my skills, said Ji Yushunwei. Lianqing was struck speechless. Now, you're a monk. If you can't let go of your own hate, why bother to pray to Buddha every day, asked Feiyan, who still remained inside the tent. I, Lianqing had no reply. Two years ago, he had chosen to become a monk in Four Truths Temple because he planned to seek for opportunities to kill the Dragon King under the cover of this prestigious temple. He had never expected that he would have been so deeply influenced by the Buddhist doctrines. Now he sincerely hoped to become a Buddhist, but he still could not give up the thought of avenging his brother's death. Suddenly, some onlooker sneered coldly, What are you waiting for? It's your divine right to avenge your brother's death. If you don't do so, you'll be despised by the others. Upon hearing that, Lianqing felt no more hesitation. He lifted up his long knife and charged toward the Dragon King. Lianqing took three big steps forward while the Dragon King took three small steps backward. In the blink of an eye, the monk was only about two meters away from the Dragon King. Ji Yushunwei carefully calculated the distance between them. When he took the third step, he just touched the ground with the toes of his back foot, and then he leapt forward and raised his saber to strike at Lianqing. When the Dragon King launched his attack, the monk had not yet firmly pressed his front foot on the ground, so his stance was not very steady. Ji Yushunwei brushed past Lianqing and then continued to run several steps under the influence of inertia. The moment he stopped and turned around, a drop of blood slid down his five-peak saber. Lianqing had practiced for days to prepare himself for this duel against the Dragon King. He had never expected that he would have lost the fight because of one false move. It made him change from the offensive to a defensive during the very last minute of the fight. 
although he managed to protect most of the vulnerable parts of his body by doing so, he still failed to dodge the Dragon King's saber. He got stabbed in his ribs just like Feiyun. Your kung fu is not so good as your brother's, Ji Yushinwei he said matter-of-factly. He failed to kill Lianqing with one blow since this time he had used a saber instead of a sword. Compared to the saber techniques he was using now, the sword skill that he had used to kill Lianqing's brother, Zhuangheng, was much more powerful. Killing is so meaningless, said Lianqing, as the warm energy inside his body as well as his hatred toward the Dragon King were gradually dripping away. Now he knew how death felt like and realized how absurd his urge for revenge was. He slowly sat down on the ground in a meditation position and continued repeating those four words killing is so meaningless. Ji Yushinwei sheathed his saber and nodded to Feiyun. It turned out that their failure to strike a deal did not prevent them from achieving their respective goals. After that, he walked toward the tents of the Great Snow Mountain. All the onlookers in his way simultaneously stepped aside to let him pass. He spotted a familiar pair of eyes in the crowd, but these big and black eyes were on a shallow male face. He and the man looked at each other for a moment, but neither of them said a word. Ji Yushinwei heaved a sigh of relief when he returned to his tent. Many people in this camp had come here to assist Lianqing but they had never anticipated that the Dragon King would have struck first to spoil their original plan. They could have worked together to kill him when the duel ended, but none of them had the courage to do so and thus missed this chance. They did not know that the Dragon King's guard was not around. Maid Lotus should have returned to her job after injuring Feiyun, but Ji Yushinwei had not sensed her presence all this while. Now he found out that she was sitting on the carpet inside the tent and her face was as pale as his. Apparently, she was severely wounded.